Hello. Uh, well, greetings and welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Did y'all receive the email I sent you? Uh, Forward no. I, social. I did not. No. Mm, I sent it out, what, about 5 o'clock, 5.30? No. Mm -mm. And I, for some reason, I'm not getting emails. I didn't get the link for uh, Queen Mother yesterday. I was hoping to get on her hearing, but I never got anything. Did that go out yesterday? I didn't get that either. We have to uh, rearrange the emails. There's no way I can get this. this is over. What you mean? What? Why can't you just go back and click I'm on it? I'm going back and I'm looking for him. I might uh, skip away. Well, we'll go to the original email and then click uh, register. It's not there. I left it there. Not uh, that one, but the one, uh, the original one that Herschel sent. The original for for what the uh, link? It's the, it's the. Uh, I didn't send a link. I sent the registration. I haven't received any emails from you, Herschel. How do I get my email into your system? All right. Uh, right now, uh, point uh, put it in the chat uh, to Carolyn Kennedy. Send it to Carolyn Kennedy. Okay. okay. Go, go in the chat and. Uh, our executive director is the keeper of the emails. Uh, I have, uh, that's the best way to do it that I found because I'm, uh, well, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> okay. So a link went out for Queen Mother's uh, hearing yesterday. Uh huh. Yeah, was that emailed out or? Huh. Uh, I wasn't in charge of that. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so uh, she. I didn't receive that either, Herschel. Oh, really? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to be talking to Mac. Okay, tomorrow about uh, our joining forces. Uh, so he's just found out about us. And uh, uh, he is uh, new to Queen Mother's orbit. Uh, he's less than a, uh, I guess it's three weeks in uh, to Queen Mother's orbit. And, uh, uh, but like he said, uh, he has his own orbit. And uh, he, uh, we're, we're, we're going to see what we do together. Yeah. Okay, but I'll make sure that uh, you are in the, uh, and I didn't know, Carolyn, you weren't getting it. I thought you would, okay, but I'll, I'll make sure that, that that's corrected. What needs to be corrected, that you weren't getting it. All right. Well, Esa, yes. Please allow to uh, hear my little voice. All right. Then uh, let's get underway then. <coughs> Andrew, I see we're streaming. Okay, I'm gonna come in as co-hosting. Yes, you are. Should I get started with Lift Every Voice now? I just told you to say yes, come on. Hold on, we're, we're gonna start the recording. <clears throat> Did you get on yet? No. Okay, go ahead, uh, Andrew. 
start the recording. All right, very good. Then play Lift Every Voice. Recording in progress. Okay. Is our native land Africa? Africa. What is our native land? Africa. Africa is the homeland of man. Africa. And it is our ancestral homeland. Welcome to the Africa Diaspora Directorate. All right. So in this series of calls uh, through the uh, 28th. Uh, we are leading up to the creation of civil society in the permanent form on the people of African descent. 
And that permanent form is a crucial, we're in that incubation stage, okay? The baby has been conceived. The baby has been born five days ago, Monday. We're on that fifth day. And the African Diaspora Directorate was conceived in 2019 to be the onboarding ramp for 300 million of us in the global African diaspora with the 1.3 billion people on the continent and member states of the African Union. We thought we were going to have to operate within the construct of between the African Union, which has not created an expanded charter for the African diaspora, but through executive action has given us a place in the African Union. But, but the United Nations has acted. The United States has acted. President Biden, his words on day one, he lived up to the words that said, we will address our history as a country and have a racial reconciliation. He said it on day one, Executive Order 13985. So Herschel, you're not facing the camera. Is I, I that am, by intent? I, I am facing the camera uh, on Herschel Daniel. Oh, okay. I'll get well, you're not the one we're streaming. I've got you're not streaming. Two things. You're, okay. Well, let me see if I can adjust you. All right. So there, there I go. All right. Thank you. So my name is Herschel Daniels. I'm chairman of Friends of the African Union who started operations through Ambassador Ali. Now, Ambassador Ali was the first ambassador from the African Union. He, who in 20, 12, excuse me, 2011, December 16, 2011, called all the people of African descent to a meeting with her to talk about the agenda for next year in South Africa for the global African diaspora meeting. She created the impetus for us to create Friends of the African Union so that we in the United States can hook up with our brothers and sisters in Africa. That Africa had not forgotten us. They'd just been busy getting out of colonial rule. They had been busy getting themselves together because the people who had ruled them for over a thousand years, because you gotta remember Africa as from the days of the 700, AD on has been rolled by invasion. It has given up hundreds of millions of its people in wars on the continent. It has exported over 50 four million Africans as slaves. 
14 million to the transatlantic slave trade, 20 million to the Arab lands. It has been rolled by everyone but itself during that time. And so in 63, when the Organization of African Union came about, that was even a fight. There was the two agendas. There was that agenda that said, we need to organize, we need to be a United States of Africa. We need to come together. We need to shuck off these land <coughs> borders <coughs> that were put into effect by the colonials in the United States in 1885. And I said the United States, that's one of the things that in the intervening years, I found out people don't realize is that the United States is a treaty signature to the Treaty of Berlin. Now, we weren't supposed to be. But by the end of World War uh, I, uh, that was part of United States law. And thereby, we had an interest in that treaty and its results in slavery and the care of our brothers and sisters, uh, all the facets of that treaty. We had the ability to use that treaty. And so when Friends of the African Union was established, we knew all this. We, we were people who had been part of the, uh, uh, we had over 200 years of experience and diplomacy uh, and living in Africa and in Pan-Africanism. Herschel, you left something out. It was actually the United States Congress in 1883 that validated King Leopold as the owner of the Congo that he took into the Berlin Conference to begin the, the scramble for Africa. So the United States Congress actually validated his ownership of Congo, which precipitated what we now know as the scramble for Africa. Yes, I was just talking about that, which was an actual treaty that came out of uh, the, the uh, meeting in Germany that was called by the newly United German State. But yes, that's true. The United States, the United States played a role with the Europeans in Africa because you have to understand the role of the Europeans uh, uh, were for over 800 years, they were ruled by in the Iberian Peninsula uh, because of the invasion uh, from uh, uh, the Iberian Peninsula from Northern Africa, okay, which was under the rule of the invasion of Arabs into the African kingdoms that took over the Roman kingdoms, uh, the Roman kingdom, and uh, they took over Iberia or what we call Spain and Portugal for nearly 800 years. Uh, then when the Europeans came back to Africa, okay, uh, that uh, uh, we had had already Arab slavery going on for Africans into the Arab lands for over 800 years. Uh, then when they came back, uh, that the, the whole institute in 1493 under the uh, uh, Roman uh, 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 Catholic Church, they ignored the Ethiopian or the original Christian church uh, on the continent, because you have to remember you, that the uh, Pope, excuse hmm? me, in 1452, yes. in 1452, uh -huh. it was Fort Nicholas with the Dom Diversas as a response to the Crusades that gave the Crusaders the right to imprison people for life that led to what we now are dealing with. Well, we, we'll argue uh, that, that question in terms of the exploratory of the uh, kingdoms uh, was actually in uh, 1493 under the Roman Catholic uh, uh, issue of a, a bull versus what I understand what you're talking about 
was not okay. It was, in a fact, unit. a papal bull. It was a papal bull of 1452, but we won't digress. Go right ahead. I apologize. No, no, no. Well, I'm learning something. Okay. Do me a yes, favor. it was a papal bull. Of, it was a pap I'll put the link in there. It's a papal bull of. I'll put, thank you. Go ahead. I'll put the link in the chat. Oh, no, no, no. So it was my understanding that was limited to the Crusades. Okay, it was not okay a universal uh, bull, but okay, I I may be wrong. Okay, uh, uh, nothing says that I'm not, and I like to learn where I'm wrong so I can correct it. But my understanding and that we're using was the 1493 because that was global in nature. And so that's what we were using in the Indigenous Peoples Alliance. And so if I'm wrong, I, I, please it's, let's the, have that. The papal bull, the papal bull you're 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 referring to is based upon the 15th for the 15th. I'll put the link in the chat. But the papal bull I'm referring to by Pope Nicholas is the one that preceded the one you're talking about. It provided yes. the foundation for it. But I'll put the link in the chat. Okay, so I, I, I need to uh, take a look at that because I don't want to turn the wrong stuff into the United Nations, okay, uh, on Sunday uh, with, within the context of uh, 1493 uh, versus uh, 1452, okay? So I need to read it and we'll have that discussion tomorrow. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, and, and so the experience that we have relative to the creation of the Friends of the African Union led us to, in 2019, the creation of the African Diaspora Directorate that would not be Friends of the African Union, but would be a neutral basis for all organizations in which to come together and that they would be able to come together uh, through that organization, uh, through memorandum of understanding and through operational uh, 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 agreements that they don't look to as a coalition of coalitions. And so uh, I, I learned this, how this works uh, through the National Community Reinvestment Coalition which is a coalition of coalitions of 600 of us who now have created over $298 billion worth of bank-based community benefit agreements. It's only that in this uh, year of 2020 that we had made a decision within NCRC as member organizations, the African Diaspora Directorate and Friends of the African Union, that we would specifically uh, create a caucus of black folk in that organization. And then of course COVID hit. And uh, we are just now after a year and a half are down that path of doing that. Uh, we just signed an agreement uh, with PNC Bank that starts on 1 January, 2022 uh, for 88 billion with NCRC and a group of members like us that negotiated this four-year deal that includes a half billion dollars worth of philanthropic funding. What we're doing today, what we do on, on, on Fridays, is we talk about human rights. We, we talk about uh, the uh, Universal Periodic Review, which is our tool for the creation of every nation that's a member of the United Nations and the Observer states of uh, the uh, uh, of the United Nations. Uh, we use that tool that uh, the ex-Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, called a most powerful tool uh, for uh, the uh, civil society in the United Nations. And we use that tool as both an identifier of human rights problems in member states and solutions to those problems. So we're more on the solution side rather than the problem identification side. 
On the problem identification side, we're more like your gap identifier, okay? We're, we're the organization that says, uh, along with reparations in the United States, okay, uh, that we, we as a, uh, I'm personally a member of NCOBRA, uh, we as an organization have paid our membership fee as NCOBRA and et cetera. We're waiting for their, them to administratively uh, acknowledge us as a, a member coalition. But we come to the table saying, okay, we know that there should be reparations paid for what has happened. We know that we have a president on day one who says racial reconciliation. We know we have an administration that on last Monday recognized that black folk should have a permanent form in the United Nations where we can all get together. Uh, we have an acknowledgement of our issues uh, on racism in America, but we agree that the statement of the ambassador, they're not unique to America. I mean, you know, you gotta look at South Africa just now had over 350 million, excuse me, 350 people uh, just were killed uh, in uh, domestic violence. They had over 70 uh, people killed uh, for uh, xenophobia, 350 in our, their, their equivalent uh, of our uh, uh, January 6, 350 killed. Uh, the uh, president of South Africa has just shook up uh, his whole government, okay, and uh, realigned his, his whole government. Uh, we are living in times of change. And this administration has said that they recognize that there has to be change. There has to be racial reconciliation, but there has to be remembrance of what has gone before. And uh, in terms of HR 40, as we were talking to some people about this today, I said, you know, we have 191 co-sponsors currently under HR 40. Now, understand what HR 40 is, not only just a study, but it's also of why reparations should happen, but it's also a study of the reparations formats that will be enacted. Now, what we have said is the Black Folks Plan for Restorative Justice, okay, is a $6 trillion, 75-year plan of action. Okay, and in that plan of action, we're basing it on the over $298 billion worth of current bank-based, Federal Reserve bank-based community benefit agreements. This ain't the, the greater corporate world of the United States. These are just the Federal Reserve banks. Okay, and so when we talk about the greater world of corporate America, uh, we're saying for the next 75 years to create a financial instrument that will $80 billion a year commitment will create a $6 trillion fund. And we give you a use of proceeds of how we spend that use of uh, that those funds. And among how we spend those funds, we talk about public safety. And so that's also a prime issue that we talk about on every Friday, okay? Uh, so human rights, public safety, that's a Friday uh, focus, uh, talking about poverty, uh, talking about human rights, and let's uh, find out who's on the uh, call and let's uh, get any questions that we have so far. Uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, I'm sorry, we're... <laughs> Uh, we did do three things differently and that will be for every day. One, we opened up with uh, uh, lift every voice and say, and that that is a, a carryover from uh, the uh, African Diaspora Directorate, uh, which we opened every call with lift every voice and say. Uh, so uh, we're carrying it over to these calls to the 28th. And uh, we'll have a, uh, uh, a version of that uh, for you tomorrow. 
uh, along with the words so that you understand what this is all about. Uh, second, we usually or, or open up with some, some words of prayer, okay? And uh, I'm gonna make sure that, uh, you know, I, I shut up in just a second. And um, we'll have uh, uh, Elder Cox, if uh, uh, she will uh, profit, okay, of the word, uh, will give us some words of prayer. And then we're going to ask, okay, uh, the uh, chairman of the African Diaspora Directorate uh, to say uh, some words of opening about this, and then we will uh, move on uh, to uh, uh, the uh, Gambia uh, from the brother who is our diplomat uh, in residence uh, from the Gambia, and it's very late for him, so we would give words from him. Uh, so, Elder Cox, uh, would you uh, uh, give us some words of opening? My apologies, I was looking for something. Um, is it okay if I read something or you want me to do the prayer? Yeah, no. it's balls in your court. Yeah, balls in your court. Okay, just something that uh, struck me and I thought I would share it. Uh, as I was thinking about it, it reminds me of some of what we're doing. And so, you know, take it for what it's worth, but I thought about Africa as a whole. And um, a scripture came to my mind, it's Isaiah 60, and it goes like this. So think of uh, the thy and the these and that as, as Africa. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, Africa. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up the, thine eyes about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shall see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedary, Samidian, and Ephah shall all, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Neboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and are as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarsha first. Bring the sons from far, their silver, their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up the walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have mercy on thee. Therefore the gates shall be open continuously. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, their nation shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together they, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet and they shall call thee the city of God, the Zion of the Holy One. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt suck the milk of the Gentiles, and thou shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, thy God, I am the Redeemer, the Mighty One. 
For brass, I will bring gold, and for iron, I will bring silver. For wood, brass, and for stones, iron, I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be light. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither the brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the God, but God shall be unto thee an everlasting light. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of the morning shall be ended. And I'll start there. It's kind of long, but anyway, just uh, it's an affirmation and declaration that came to my mind. Uh, about Africa. We began in the beginning, there was Africa, and all people came from there, and so it shall be as we go forth. Amen. Thank you. Such is our opening of this day, the fifth day in a new era of the unification of 1.6 billion human beings in the permanent form on the people of African descent. Chairman Kofi Adjapong, I would ask you, uh, would you uh, take the floor? Thank you very much, Managing Director. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of Africa. The scripture I read just now tells you and me what the Europeans have done to the African world. The Bible was written by us, by our ancestors, during the time of the ancient African spiritual civilization. Very few people know anything about it because what we know is what the white man has written. Very few Africans have written anything for us. The Bible, is called the Book of Knowledge and Wisdom. A lot of things are in the Bible as opposed to Quran. But when this, the humanist says true to our God and true to our native land, and we are worshiping a God which is not an African God, then where are we? The African has a different religion, or the whole Black Africa. That has been completely destroyed, almost gone, being replaced by the European who, were, who inherited the Roman Empire. And as the managing director said, uh, and the Arabs came, went to North Africa and God, the concept of religion, and the Romans, to me, were some of the wisest men ever lived. Their writings, if you go and read the Roman stories, very interesting. You may even forget about the life of Christ. They write so well. So now where are we? We always say true to our God and true to our native land. And we are not in our native land. And we are not truth, truthful to our God. So where are we going? It's a serious thing I'm telling you. And on the normal circumstances, I will say it because sometimes Hesha objects. Because when I speak on this subject, it's the key to my understanding of life. The Europeans have stolen everything from us, including our way of looking at God. If you go to East, South, West, and North of Africa, we have one religion. Anybody who opposes that is a foreign. So Africa now is full, is 100% almost foreigners in religion, Christianity and Islam are the dominant parts. And nobody speaks it. Some of my friends in Nigeria who took the floor to speak about religion, they evade Islam and Christianity because Boko Haram is in Nigeria. 
if you are not careful, these are black men who will come and chop your head away. This is a real thing. So most of the African scholars have no knowledge or will not even there to uh, research into finding out what is the African religion. But anyway, we are on. We are not giving up. Gradually, we are crawling. Gradually, now, we are uniting now. Isn't it amazing that the children of Africa who were scattered all over the world are now being pulled together by the Europeans? And we are going there gradually. And they better be careful because we are not them and they are not us. And I want you to take what I've said very seriously because if, if you are a fish in the water and they take you out of the water and put you in the sun, you're dead. Can we say that is what African is? At least those are born to see in Ghana, they're completely like beast in a sense. Why we say you are a scholar and you steal and you embezzle and you take the money for the poor and you buy cars, you put them in, in European banks. Kwame Nkrumah of all men has $650 million in Swiss bank. And these are the things that we came to me. They give you the money. I was the chief accountant of the state transport. They came, they, they came to bring me money and I rejected because my conscience had been developed to this level. And I want each one of them of you hearing me develop a mind that is not necessary to own everything, to own all the companies, to create all the companies for yourself, create it for us. Thank you very much. So as the chairman said, uh, we, we have disagreements, okay, that we, we talk about this uh, because I, I point out that uh, uh, Christianity uh, comes out of Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, it was conquered by the Roman Empire and made the religion of Europe but it comes out of Africa because Egypt is of Africa. And the original concept of the Christ as a written form comes out of Mayat. And that discussion we have ongoing. And so I understand that uh, uh, the chairman, okay, of uh, the African diaspora director and sons and daughters of Africa, based on his life experience, has seen where we have come to today that the indigenous religions of Africa uh, in the majority of countries are now running a distant third between Islam and Christianity on the continent. And with Islam, ascendancy uh, from 670 AD uh, on uh, has changed the continent. One of the things that another change is that's going on on the continent that people are not realizing is the agreement between the, the Roman Catholic Church and Sunni Islam that happened. And that meeting that happened between the Pope and the leading cleric in Sunni Islam uh, is rolling both. But we here in America have no clue that that's going on. And majority of Africa uh, have no clue that that's going on. One of the things that we're going to be able to do in this permanent forum is to expand on that discussion because our landing point right now in this conference call is first the, the Gambia. And next year, the Gambia is going to host 
the OIC. And this year in those discussions that we can have here in America, between the Christian church, between Sunni Islam, indigenous African religions, the whole idea of the world religious bringing it together, we can facilitate that for people of African descent because we're facilitating a conversation about uh, the upcoming global climate summit, which threatens us all, everybody all 7 billion of us. Which is why you wanted to allow our guests from Africa to speak now while it gets, before it gets too late. And that, that was my lead up to, to him, okay? You, you didn't see the chat, but yes, that was my, my lead up uh, to him because uh, he's uh, gracious enough to be up early in the morning to be on these calls. And your excellency, I, I now give over to you the floor. Thank you very much, honorable brother. Greetings to all in the room. Peace be with all of you. And we thank uh, the pastor for the wonderful prayers. We really need to stop the killing and uh, try to nurture peace in the mind of everybody. Talking about peace and harmony of religions, I would start with the Gambia first. The reason why, or one of the most important reasons why the African Union chose the Gambia as the headquarters for the African Union Human Rights Commission headquarters. Anyone who doesn't understand how peoples of different religious beliefs and creeds and cultures live harmoniously as brothers and sisters, try it, visit Gambia at least for two weeks. You will never identify anybody by the looks or by their interaction as a Christian, as a Muslim, or as an African traditional believer. We are all one big family. And we go to each other's functions and we respect, respect each other's beliefs. So what is being perpetrated in Nigeria by the Boko Haram, the same thing is happening in Biafra, killing innocent Nigerian Muslims, which is unfortunate. When you come to the Gambia, you would see Christians respect their church and all other people respect the churches. And fight to protect them. The same thing applies to the mosques. The same thing applies to the shrines of the traditional Africans. Mm -hmm. We even have a traditional national shrine where you have crocodiles. And people around the world come there as tourists to pay respects to, the, to that shrine. And even Gambian Muslim and Christians visit the shrine. So coming back to the origin of religion, I respect all your views, but I would just like to remind you a little bit. Mm -hmm. The Quran came not to contradict, but to confirm what the Bible said. So it did not come to, be, to give a big encyclopedia of explanations. It summarizes and confirms what the Bible said. Judaism, we can say, started in Africa because the house of Israel, who is the house of Israel? It is Jacob with his 12 children. Unfortunately, due to their personal tricky enmity, trying to drown one of their brothers in a well, gave birth to the Jewish religion in Egypt because it was that rejected brother that became, and showing you how generous and benevolent 
Africans are because the Denferos are of our kind, you and me. They look like you and me. They don't segregate people on their color. They look at your nobility and your righteousness. They identified the righteousness of Joseph, gave him a high position in the government of Egypt. It is what brought to the rise of the Israelites. And Greeks, we are coming to Egypt to study. From around the world, we are coming to Egypt to seek knowledge. And no doubt the Israelis are not an exception. Even the Ark of the Covenant, which they so secretly place in their sacred chambers in Israel, I don't know where it is now, if it is ever existed. The gold they built it with was from Africa in Egypt. And when they started mischief, it had to take them, it had to take God to come and rescue them from the punishment meted on them for their mischief on the hospitality granted them. And uh, I once met some Arabs in India. I told them that Islam was originated by Africans and they were not very happy about it. <laughs> I told them, I told them who is the mother is of Ismail, the wife of Prophet Ibrahim, the lady he married from Egypt. They said is Haja, Haga, the African woman. And I told them, let me tell you one thing. If you are looking low upon Africans, especially black people, I'm telling you, I am looking low upon you because from the instance Islam was founded, everyone who goes to pilgrimage, it is mandatory, you have to run seven times from the different, uh, in between the two Arab, uh, mounts of Arafah to make the same trekking that Haga did when she was looking for water for her child, Ismail, who was abandoned with her in that valley of Becca. So the foundation of Islam is black. So they were so mad, they said, you know, we never even realized this that everybody going to pilgrimage is running that seven rounds in memory of a black woman. I said, yes, because you are ignorant. So Africa was the beginning of everything and so shall we maintain it. And let us forget about calling any African Sunni, Christian, blah, blah. We are Africans. Let us keep our religions in our closets in our masjids, in our churches, in our shrines. But when we come together, when you build a masjid bench, if you are in the car, you would not realize which part was made by a Christian, which part was made by a Jew, which part was made by a Zoroastrian. But that same capital that was built by different religions, the owner of the capital takes that capital and uses it in favor on his chosen religion and fight the rest. So what's the point? Let us march together with our talents, with our powers, with our resources. I don't believe Europeans have stolen anything from us because just like uh, brother uh, Daniel said, we already have more than, he said some 30 trillion, I'm saying more than 300 trillion. And even the dollar is not even worth enough to value the value of uh, resources that are not yet touched in the continent. We need to get a new standard of valuation, but not to peg it against any currency of the enslavers. So in saying this, I invite you to come to the Gambia and see where there is no color, no religions difference, and we are harmoniously moving as one people and we engage each and every person of African origin as ours. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. And so let, let's be, be clear in, in terms of 
uh, the Gambia. And so people understand, uh, we have agreed in principle here, the organizations represented here, that next week that we will issue a letter of intent uh, to form a cooperative operation in the Gambia that would one, create a global communications, computing, connectivity, e-commerce, cryptology network that would also serve as the basis for creating a healthcare infrastructure for all 1.6 billion people of African descent with our initial country on the continent, the Gambia. Because the Gambia number two, as a public-private partnership, number one is a civil society partnership with black businesses. Number two is to create a public-private partnership with number one, with the government of the Gambia. And number three is on that basis to create an export trade infrastructure in the United States focused on the Gambia that makes usage of the universal periodic review and the infrastructure that is in place from the United States that can support project one and two. In implementation of this with the understanding on project four that we would specifically use the whole idea of the return because this is the year that we're using the extended return, COVID interrupted the year of return as declared by Friends of the African Union, the African Diaspora Directorate and partners in 2019. And so that this return will be centered around creating a planned unit development. And in that planned unit development with the idea that 10,000 Americans with a focus on people of African descent, with a focus on veterans, with a focus on seniors who have a pension, who have a steady income of funds that would allow them to then buy a lifestyle in a planned unit development in a gated community that would support an employment ratio of 10 to one. In other words, if there's 10,000 households that come from America that would employ 100,000 Gambians on an ongoing basis. In that employment would include the creation of an educational infrastructure that is tied to an American school of medical science that is certified domestically in the United States that is willing to take that extension domestically to the Gambia to train medical professionals in the Gambia who would be qualified for certification under American educational standardization and that would also not only for doctors nurses and other health professionals but it would include initially those in health it information technology and so that information technologist then would become a global service center from the gambia for a health IT infrastructure for that 1.6 billion people of African descent through the Indigenous Peoples Alliance 
and a co-op that is being proposed out of that on this Sunday. Questions? And Suzanne Young, well, my questions are always the same because for those uh, in the, even in this country who are looking more to um, healthier options than the traditional healthcare offers, I was just successful in getting a doctor to take my sister off five medicines that were causing her problems. Is there something, uh, and I know this in order probably to, uh, because the pharmaceutical and the uh, lobby is so strong, I don't want the group to run into problems like, you know, but integrative medicine, I mean, there are things that, uh, that we can do or people have done that don't have the side effects and problems. Is it is there a way to tap into like just like you have the certification and I'm trained, of course, as a nurse, but a way to I would like to be, you know, is there a way to get that other piece in there with the traditional integrative and the National Institute of Health calls it integrative CAM, complementary and alternative. They have names for it, you know. So so in Africa. Sister, they're, they're, they're way ahead of you, <laughs> okay? Uh, they, they've already approved uh, creating a traditional uh, health infrastructure along with... Okay, you just broke up. I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> so in Africa, they have... Can you hear me? I can now. It was just a little piece that broke off. You said they have already the way ahead because they have something already going on. Yeah, they, they have already approved such an infrastructure in the African Union's medical plan. Oh, good. All right. right. And it's up to us to bring that into the permanent form as explanation, but that, that's part of our direct connection with the African continent. Okay, so that's our direct con uh, with the African Union. So we're, we're operating on both the United Nations basis. All right, so that's all 1.6 billion of us worldwide. And so we, you, you'll take a lead in making that happen in the medical portion of that, because that's what you wanted to do, all right? But separately, we in the United States, our CDC birthed the African CDC. But the African medical plan from 2016 to 2030 and its implementation has birthed the whole concept of traditional 6,000 year old medicine needs that learning needs not to be lost. All right, and so they, they are addressing it. And what COVID has given us is the opportunity to embed it, okay? Uh, with unfortunately this variant D plus, okay? And as you as a health professional, you know that every day it's getting worse and worse in terms of the studies uh, that are, are coming out in booster shot, the whole question et cetera, and the whole mass question. Uh, so here in America, we're looking at at least 200,000, maybe another 400,000 deaths, okay, uh, by this time next year. Have you have you read uh, Harriet Washington's work, The uh, Medical Apartheid? Because after, it's um, on book and audio as well. If you look at that, because she talks about beware of things that come out now just based on our history, because I don't personally believe every report they say because it wouldn't be the first time that they were not totally honest. But but the medical apartheid, Harriet Washington, and so, you know, but anyway, I'm just saying thank you for that because I do like the fact that the, that the traditional yeah, I, start I, I, but I will say that in particular, uh, no, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's, uh, I forgot to power my phone. <laughs> uh, so the, the, 
apartheid that has went on through 65 and then the racism from 65 on here in America, uh, we have a unique opportunity to address it. But I will say in terms of messenger RNA uh, that I studied the issue, messenger RNA is something brand new. It, it's two decades old in terms of work. And so, uh, uh, yes, I, I, I looked at it, okay, and I, I did look at the issue. Well, it's a book called Medical Park, but I guess what you've answered my question that regardless of whether it's COVID or swine flu or cancer, or whatever, that in the African tradition, we can opt, have the freedom to opt, use other options is really my point, I guess. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we, we agree. And like I said, uh, within the whole idea of the permanent form, uh, I'll be sending you uh, the uh, invitation to Create it. What we're going to do is create it under the African Diaspora Directorate because we have that in terms of domestic to bring it together for the diaspora. But now we have the permanent form, which lets us create it globally, the African Union, yes, and then domestically in the United States. Okay, COP, COP twenty six is, is yeah. our goal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I muted uh, Kofi. He has to unmute himself. About 10 months or a year ago, I mentioned here that I belong to a group in Ghana that only speaks in three. I can't hear you. Local language up, on traditional medicine. And anyone who you. wants to contact them, I can give you the email, the WhatsApp. Right. And you can reach them. This is a very important thing. The greatest problem facing us here is organization. I formed SADA when I was in law school in 1970. It took up to 50 years for me to meet you. And all the time I was very active. The African-American has all the knowledge in the world, but it's organized. Well, we're, we're, we're organized now. Uh, I mean, when we met Thank you. on Friday about US policy, there were groups on the phone that was representing over uh, 800 different civil society organizations. And moving together uh, from Friday to Monday, uh, from Thursday when the United States uh, worked in the U UN about the permanent form and Monday, the change happened. Okay, so what, what hasn't come, there hasn't been a, a plan, a black folks plan uh, that has for people to rally around. Okay, it's a permanent form for people to rally around. People didn't know how to connect up with the African Union because they were taught incorrectly. What we have the chance to do now is to make that happen, okay? Because there's organizations, like I'm Capital Legacy, okay? Uh, you know, Divine Nine, there's over 2 million in the Divine Nine, okay? All right, organization, it's organized. It's organized over 100 years, okay? Now, is the NAACP maybe missing in action on some things? That's fine. That's our chance. We've agreed that we work from Kansas to deal with agriculture in the NAACP. I was on the phone today uh, with the banking aspect out of Kansas, okay? Uh, that will come around uh, relative to agriculture, all right? Organizational, but they have to have a theme. The problem that we haven't had is that we haven't had an objective that uh, we could all organize around. Think about it, HR 40, organization to get 191 co-sponsors in the house right now. That took organization. Now, what we can't do as the goal line is in, in, in reach where we've now birthed the permanent form, what we have to do is just do an Uber organizational infrastructure. 
And so that's just now, that's what we're doing. This is the basis for that Uber organizational infrastructure. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just uh, uh, let, let's do uh, uh, some of that organizational. Uh, and I would ask uh, Mary, uh, if she comes on and gives us a uh, report on that organizational infrastructure that she's working on. And then uh, I would ask uh, if uh, uh, Michael would give uh, the work uh, that uh, created, think about it. This year, the president created a national holiday on Juneteenth, okay? And so I'm gonna ask Michael to follow Mary or Mary, if you're ready, uh, you can start. Thank you, uh, Hasho. Uh, sometimes <laughs> it is uh, it's tough when uh, when you're talking of organization. True, I can see what uh, uh, Dr. Kofi is trying to drive at. Actually, when uh, when I met him, he was one person who was bored, and I said, "Oh, how do we hang around here?" You know, <laughs> so when he's saying that African Americans are not organized, actually, I let him. I would wish to also say Africans or oh, bl blacks in general we get challenged by organization. So if you are a historical African American, don't take it personal, because I'm used to the way I call him Uncle Kofi. We <laughs> we we just hashtag there, and you are like wait 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 wait. So he's just meaning all of us. But what we are trying to also advocate for is that organization in terms of financial. Remember, organizing people is so hard if they don't have means. And uh, this goes hand in hand with even different challenges, even on on the issues of good governance on the continent. It is not because that. Our people don't want all those good uh, meridian goals that are there, but the means challenge them. So at uh, Watch Democracy Grow, we have, uh, together with this group, which we started on various issues, and then thank God we are now on a compromise. So uh, we, we, we are kind of pushing a vehicle called uh, uh, we compare it to the Marshall Plan, but in the real sense, we call it Africa Infrastructure Development Plan. And if I may take this opportunity to just share maybe five minutes of the PowerPoint that we are having in the community. Let me see if uh, it would be easy for me to do. Uh, are, are we able to see there, please? Okay, so the, 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 the Marshall Plan we are talking about was the recovery after the World War II. And uh, it was intended to help Europe get back to, to, the knee, to their knees economically. So we are like, whichever we are trying for, even here, by the way, or even at home, as long as there is no economic an economic injection in the system, the system will still just revolve over us. We are talking of the People's Forum, the Permanent Forum. If it is not having the means, it is also going to be theoretically, but not practically. So we are trying to show how, uh, how uh, the Second World War, the challenges that were, the, were there after the war, even what is there after COVID the current economic crisis on the continent itself, it's so appalling with the COVID when we can't even afford our vaccines. We can't, we've been actually fighting for the SDRs to be approved so that we, we borrow more money. The question becomes how long are we going to be indebted? And that indebtedness usually affects the future of any generation. So for the Marshall Plan, we, we tend to see various factors that facilitated the idea. First, there was the initial uh, uh, effort from the German banker to reach out to the U.S. for that hand. And there was the U.S. willingness to help German. There was also a political 
uh, ground which was favorable for both because they both believed they could gain. So this particular uh, plan we are trying to advocate for also is that it is a plan that is going to end the, the, the security concern that we are discussing here. Remember when young people are just idle, they are not in school, they are not working, then they are vulnerable for any negative forces on the continent. So the money we spend fight terrorism. If we could combine all that to create a package that would help on the continent, maybe those issues we are talking about would be reduced. So this is how it was reimbursed. I'm not just going, oh, it was uh, financed. I'm not going to go more into that because this is where we are using to compare what can we learn from the, the African infrastructure uh, development plan what can we learn from the Marshall Plan? That is going to be uh, our action plan. Or is it maybe we can we move things around? Should we change, especially that maybe the conditions that were there in 1947 are not the current conditions that we are facing now? And some are similar because when you're talking of the issue of immigration, we have, because there are no hope sometimes on the continent, the current Western world is full of pretty much Africans coming for the better opportunities. Probably this would offer a hope in that Africa becomes a desirable place that the young generation would remain there. We are talking of even human capital development. When we see corruption and uh, illicit financial flows, it is because sometimes we have less engagement of our people into those things. So how do we create human capital in that the Africans also are going to engage in that uh, Dr. Kofi would have loved to start a school and maybe go and teach in Ghana, but comparing the advantage of US vis-a-vis -vis Ghana, that is why he's here. That is why I'm here too, you know, and, and very many. So how do we make Africa such an, an attractable continent for the people of of, of, of the African descent or even the Africans in general. And the only way we are trying to advocate for that is that if we get the means and uh, the continent becomes stable, who knows, we would get maybe a 21st century growing business pattern in that we end the notion of always running from IMF with the you know loans and all that kind of because remember indebtedness on the continent it's one thing which has crippled the African economies so without to uh, taking much of your time that's where we are these are the areas that we are trying to focus on we are calling it a six model which is going to focus on education infrastructure, health, energy boost, industrial and manufacturing capacity building, hard infrastructure, roads, railway, and others, good governance and accountability as the best practices to really try to integrate on the continent. Because what made one thing that made German Marshall Plan succeed was that German government was very responsible. As a matter of fact, when the US was expecting that the money which was revolving from the, the, the German Marshall Plan that they had established was supposed to be paid, used to be paid uh, back, it was the German government which had actually put their taxes to pay back. So the other amount of money continues to revolve, lending to the civil society and other uh, uh, industries and manufacturing German companies. And the, the plan boosted German to a bigger capacity. So we hope that with the good governance and accountability, that would be at least something that would be able to push the plan. So in short, that's where we are. We had uh, last uh, Tuesday, we presented at African Advocacy Network, where we had a lot of religious groups really interested in the program. On Tuesday, we are meeting the accountab their accountability working group so that they can incorporate that notion of saying how responsible are our governments going to be so that we can be able to hear our communities of that. And with that, that is the update that I had. I thank you for the minutes. Hey. Questions, questions, questions. Bye, Mike. Presentations there. Questions.
This is not so much a question. I just uh, looking at the Marshall Plan and after uh, this 1947 and um, the United States also became the world reserve currency, right? Is that the time or that was before that? It, it, it is uh, during that whole era that we took uh, control of the world currency. We still control 70% of it. Uh, uh, the world's $200 trillion in uh, funding, uh, GDP right now. And uh, we've made moves going off of LIBOR, LIBOR to still continue that control. Yes. So Mary, is this plan, this Marshall Plan, you're having meetings about this with what group and what group will be signatory if there is such a plan out of your team? Okay, so the current group that is working on that, we have uh, the we have Hasho who is part of it, also. That would be African Directorate. We have UNESCO Center for Peace. We have Watch Democracy Grow. We have uh, individuals whom we call Friends of Africa. These are academians. These are people who have worked with the USAID before, and they are like based on our experience on the continent. This is where the roof holes may have been. This is what, because remember this, we are trying to make this a civil society, concurring with the, the permanent forum, empowering community, especially on the continent. Remember, we don't have a lot of checks and balances. So this, uh, that, that's the group that is working on, on, on the plan. So Andrew? Yes. Okay. Uh, one. Uh, the conversation I think you're going to have, we'll have offline relative to this, but uh, once we reach a, an agreement next week, uh, we are also, as part of the Civil Society of the African Union, I'm part of the, when I say I, I got to stop using that I, we are part uh, through Friends of the African Union. Uh, part of the civil society infrastructure in the African Development Bank, the African CDC, and uh, other African Union organizational infrastructure. Once we have this agreement next week, uh, we will be taking it to Africa House. We've already talked to the ambassador, and she is very much interested in calling a meeting uh, to the table like Ambassador Ali did. Okay, so I will uh, talk to you more about that on our international call tomorrow. Okay, before our international call. Uh, right, Mary, the last question I have is how, because it seems that you do have people that are on the African continent. Now, we've talked about the 12 flagship projects for the continent of Africa. It seems that what you're now talking about could in, in fact involve the entire African diaspora and the legacy, the diaspora legacy, the diaspora commissions for each of the 55 African countries. Have you taken that into consideration or does that make any impact on what you're doing? No, actually, uh, we want, th th thank you for actually that addition because uh, the essence is that we want to bring also, remember diaspora gives a lot of remittances on the continent. So we want to make this one also another way that A, diaspora can be involved on the continent, that B, if they want also to do some development activities on the continent, they have that leverage. And C, we just finished the conceptual paper and we are now getting out to the community. So yes, we are going to consider them. We had actually Africa Development Bank on Thursday where we are trying to to let them know that uh, for the purposes of letting it be a, a civil society best kind of initiative, we can't roll it over to the African Development Bank. Therefore, we will need a separate entity, just like in Germany, they had to create an agency which was going to deal with the infrastructure uh, re rehabilitation. Yes, I understand my point, however, <clears throat> is that, for example, I know Nigeria has a commission. There are five diaspora members of that commission. One of them happens to be Shola Agula, who is part of our team. But it seems to me that you can gain power in your presentation by targeting your message to those 
interested groups that yeah. have a best interest in succeeding. Yeah, sure, sure. We yeah, are just so, going to the community right now, to the organizations, actually even the African Union will reach there. We, we, we just reached out to the Africa Development Fund, mm -hmm. but we are, and we are just uh, concentrating on the conceptual paper, so that while we are engaging them, you have what you're going to discuss with them, but definitely we are going to consider those. Okay, Herschel, I'll be quiet. <laughs> so, so just so you know people tomorrow's our international organizational day and so uh that's when we're going to dive in a uh, deep dive in, into this all right uh so mary thank you very much okay we wanted to get that on on the table okay so that people understand uh about the part that they can play but if you want to know more in detail come back tomorrow one quick question please yes this is hanif khalil wichita council of elders western r seventh division she met mary mentioned the conceptual paper yes how can we get how can we get access you you, you will have access to the paper you, brother you will have full access to the papers uh, next week in the conceptualization papers, uh, they'll be uh, posted on our uh, joint website. Thank you. Well, what the brother didn't ask is how before it goes to the website, if at all, can there be a review and contributions by those people who have skill sets that may improve what it is that's presented? That's what he did. That, it, it, uh, again, it will be draft con conceptualization that they will be able to participate in the working groups of making the, the papers better. Actually, Thank we you. are we are even inviting people to be part of it. And in, if, in the case they want to edit the paper, it is already we have it on the on the Google Doc. Can you put the link in the chat so that we can access it, please? Uh, you can do that via your email and uh, not right now. Yeah, so that, okay, that's, I'll put why, my email. that's why I said, Andrew, <laughs> that we were going to uh, continue this tomorrow. It, it is right now to the documents. We will put those into probably put those into the chat tomorrow. Thank you. OK, all right. Uh, and if you want more information on that, uh, please come back tomorrow for tomorrow's call at 7 p.m. on our international. So will be the, I think will it be the, the same Zoom State link? Brother. The same yeah, link for the international call? Yes, the same link every day. But Brother Hanif, Hanif Khalili, if you'll put your email into the chat, what we try to do is uh, connect with those people whose email we have with updates of the uh, daily recordings. So if you're making it available, I'll do my best to get it out to you. Yes, sir. I'm doing it as we speak. Same goes for everyone else. Yeah. Oh, by the Thank way, you. there's also a link in the chat. <clears throat> We're streaming this on Facebook. So for those of you that want to share this in other uh, postings, if you are able to do that, even <laughs> after we're done here, it will start over from the beginning. So people can get it from get it from the beginning. That's in the chat as well. Where on Facebook are you streaming it? I stream it every day to the Encounter Think Tank. It's a group, the Encounter Think Tank is a group that I stream to. And then I post that link to the other pages. If, if you want, you can always go uh, to where it says live streaming on Facebook. And, it, and you drop down, it says copy streaming link. And a copy streaming link, and you can take that copy streaming link and you can drop it into our site at the African Diaspora Directory, uh, FDD 2063 on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I did that earlier today, this time. So now this is I a have daily... been looking for it in the FDD group, and it hasn't been being streamed there. So I was. I didn't so so I, I, again, uh, we, we will take care of that tonight. In terms of the 411 of how to do that, we'll come back on and talk about that. Yes, uh, Hanif, to answer your question, <clears throat> I think you probably access this through a registration link. 
we'll be doing this daily through uh, August the 28th. But my understanding is that once you register for any of them, you can use the same link every day. The link doesn't change. That's right. That's correct. Okay. And right now in, in the uh, chat is where it currently lands. Okay. And so you could just take that link and put that link anywhere on Facebook and you will get the live stream. You can put it on your front page. You can put it in any group, put it in any page right there. It's in the chat. And Andrew just, puts this up every, every every time we do this. Okay, Andrew puts this up at the beginning of the uh, event, but there it is. Yeah, so even if, again, if people can't don't tune in while we're live streaming, the link will still be active. It'll begin at the beginning. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's accessible. And, and we, we go and check and see if there's any questions. And if there's any questions, uh, we try and answer them on the next day. Well, I'm very much inspired and encouraged by the fact that you do this daily. Uh, the urgency demands that we do something like this on this type of basis. And I'm hopeful and prayerful that we can uh, achieve the goals that we're talking about right now. I'm very much encouraged by this. Well, now may be the time for you, sir, if you'd be so kind, because typically uh, we have, a, 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 I think uh, Herschel calls it a roll call. We identify who we are. Most of the people here have already gone through that. But Mr. Hanif, we encourage you in the chat to put your, I, I heard your title, but put your identif identifying group or organization. If there's a website, if there's a way we can reach you. But I, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the chairperson to handle all those things. I'll be quiet again. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Andrew, you're, you're, you're never quiet, but you're informing. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is all about unity in the community. We've been there. Uh, so, Michael. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, floor is yours. Tell us about uh, the connections that have happened this year. Well, first, uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Michael Harris. I'm out here in California, in Sacramento uh, region. Um, for 20 years, chair of the California Black Agriculture Working Group, uh, a, a veteran of policy won't work with the USDA and uh, a veteran. And so right now we're combining that work uh, and the, the beautiful fruit as Herschel asked me to talk about is the amazing success of a national federal holiday that is called Juneteenth. And whether folks like it or not, uh, it was a military operation that enslaved people of African descent. They were sent Spanish and Portuguese, in this instance, to the Western Hemisphere, were sent to capture people of African descent. And the idea that it was people of African descent that were deciding back, deciding balance in the Civil War, according to the president and the military uh, leaders, generals that were on the ground, uh, the winners and the losers said those Africans, those formerly free and enslaved Africans with guns were the deciding battles to end the U.S. Civil War. Juneteenth was the last major battle, as we call it, as we celebrate the holiday, uh, the last stronghold of Confederate port in Galveston Island, Texas, uh, where many thousand troops took ships and landed at that port and took a seven week campaign throughout Texas, sealed the border with Mexico and were victorious in ending the US Civil War. And then 13th Amendment, that's another conversation. But Juneteenth, uh, June 19th, 1865 is now a national holiday. 
And so the work that we're doing with the veterans is really a quarterly thing and merging. Well, let me back up. Most of the folks that were uh, on the battlefield were, were agriculturalists, whether they were farmers or at the dock, like uh, Crispus Attucks, who was the first to die uh, for America to be uh, away from British. All of this was agricultural. Uh, we were very agrarian society uh, here in America and certainly in Africa. And the idea that uh, we can bring that back together as uh, most of us believe in a, a faith in, 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 in our tradition, um, you know, you dress and keep the garden. And that's right out of, that's your vocation. And so we do that quarterly, um, Juneteenth in the summer, right, right around the summer solstice, uh, in the, the, the fall, right around the uh, optuminal equinox, usually there's a homecoming. And then you go to Kwanzaa, which is the agricultural holiday that was founded here in California, uh, synthesizing many uh, harvest festivals in ancient Africa. And then Black History Month, we start Black History Month with, uh, here in California, we celebrate Rosa Parks Day. Uh, and the women that led the civil rights movement that taught brought King to Montgomery, the patron saint of the Women's Political Council was Rosa Parks, who was doing the work uh, long before the bus ride uh, that she chose not to get up. So the idea that uh, Black veterans, as well as the agricultural, have been leading this effort uh, is what and how I got involved with this group and uh, you know, grounding ourselves in the fact that most of us want to have a good food, clean water, uh, a roof over our head and some clothes on. And the one thing that is consistent in all of those is it's an agricultural construct to eat, have clean water, forestry, and certainly have some clothes on your back. So that uh, I'm looking forward to drilling down and, and making some concrete plans so we can sustain this effort. Uh, you know, the, the work to make Juneteenth a holiday, I'm not on the national board anymore because uh, I'll just say politics and we, we've got this, uh, the holiday is done, but now what do we call it a Freedom Day or Independence Day and what does that look like? So here in California, we, we don't have any, uh, any uh, I guess you would say political challenges. We are, it, by statute, it is Freedom Day and we can focus and that's what I'm we do in the next few years is focusing on the hundred cities here in California to have over a hundred thousand people to tell the authentic story of how people in California our unique journey uh, towards freedom here in California. And by no means are we there. However, we do have the only uh, active statutory authority to drill down and take a look at uh, how we could have some reparative justice. Uh, with Assembly Bill 3121, authored by uh, Dr. Shirley Weber, who's now the Secretary of State, uh, who is uh, the custodian of the archives uh, of the election. And uh, her, her daughter uh, took her seat in the 79th District in San Diego. Uh, OBGYN, I believe, is, is her discipline as a, as a doctor. So we're, we're, we're in really good shape going forward. Now we just have to drill down. How do we sustain this effort? And, and finally, I'll say this. This week has been, a, it's, it's been a, just a rough week in the midst of the UN uh, authorizing, you know, in, in a good way, the permanent forum for people of African descent. You know, some of the most amazing people I know, three of them checked out. One, Dr. Goss, um, and I say check out in, from the physical realm. Dr. Goss looked at my eyes and told me what was wrong with me. You know, and I said, how does man know that? And he's, he's making his transition. Uh, Dr. Well, I don't know if Renoko has a PhD, but he is the top scholar. But uh, yeah. Renoko Rashid, he's making his transition. Uh, I believe 120 countries and many, many books. Just a beautiful brother. And, and, and finally, um, our brother, the African Scientific Institute, you know, Brother Cherry just, you know, 
there, there, there are no words to describe, you know, how Black August started. We, we're not even a week into it and we've lost, you know, uh, in our physical presence, these three brothers and many others that we don't know the name of. But these three, it, it, it hasn't really sunk in yet, but the work continues. And uh, as Herschel said, Juneteenth, our freedom celebration. If you do your DNA, I guarantee you, you came from some part of Africa. That's going to be probably 80%, probably. Now, if you got less than that, well, you know, we can look and see in your face that you got less than that. You know, like, like my mother, she has about 40% because she's indigenous and French and, and the Africans there, but it, you know, the French and the Indian, because she talked to uh, But the, the beauty is, uh, you know, she raised some kids that know exactly who they are, both the indigenous side out of, uh, right past the Black Oil River uh, in Alabama. And the reason why uh, Rosa Parks Day is, is here in California is I authored it honoring them fine butter pecan sisters uh, that don't mind standing up uh, and being courageous and doing things. And, and that's my mother and, and, and all of those others that are there. I mean, they could be white if they wanted to, but that big nose and that, that, that Afro and that whoop ass attitude, because uh, I took a few, more than a few, uh, will make a strong black man stronger. So uh, I'll stop there and turn it back the floor over and answer any questions I may be. Uh, Open mic, any questions on veterans? Uh, any questions on uh, Juneteenth? Yes. Um, Michael, first, thank you so much. I want to let you know that in October, every year here in Los Angeles, for the last several years, we've had something called the Taste of the Soul. And typically it has become the largest free event in the entire county of Los Angeles. At its height, uh, they only claim to have 300,000 people to come out for a weekend. I would love for us to begin now to engage with uh, Danny Bakewell and the Sentinel who are the sponsors of it to focus on the celebration of Juneteenth because here in Los Angeles, we have a very vibrant Juneteenth group. So I would like to put that on the table for looking forward for the next few months in planning. Yeah, that, yeah. Danny, um, well, let me say this. Uh, some of us on the call have, have heard Harvey Reed, uh, who is uh, probably going to be the chair again of the statutory committee with USDA. Uh, he and Danny went to school together. And uh, at the Million Moore Movement, um, when we were on the main stage with uh, the Nation of Islam, uh, Danny offered to, you know, sponsor a weekly uh, a conversation around agriculture for Black folks in California. I didn't think it would be a good use of my time because folks just weren't ready. But I've been there many times, many, 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 many times with, with Danny uh, in the back rooms with Jesse. Uh, we just finally are moving forward with uh, Black agriculture. Again, I was in the room when we got the Pickford case and there was problems with it. And I told people, I was a lawyer, I told people where they were. And my, my, my email is Black agriculture, urban agriculture at Gmail. Those are mine. I'm in the room for Pickford, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with Danny and the California media group. The, the challenge is, yeah, over 300,000 people when, you know, COVID's not hit. The challenge is, is who's producing that food? Who's packaging that food? It's not Black folks. We don't have any value. But I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I would love to revisit that conversation in a collaborative way with uh, that we've been doing with uh, childhood friends, Harvey Reed and Danny. You know, he's from the same place my people are down in Louisiana. And his son is doing a wonderful job, and there's good continuity, so it'll keep going. It won't be like many other... Uh, black newspapers that don't have good continuity. So let, let me say in terms of uh, for the what, the issue that you raised about uh, no, five minutes. I'm, I'm on the manufacturer uh, that uh, uh, we're going to have that conference call on uh, Sunday and we're bringing that to the table 
uh, on the manufacturing of, of uh, us manufacturing food. Uh, we struck a partnership deal uh, with uh, several companies uh, for us to do just that uh, manufacturing. I got to talk to you and Harvey tomorrow. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't through because the other part of that, Michael, was because we have Elder Cox on the line. And as you know, she's a commission member of the 400 year anniversary African American Commission. It seems that we may be able to afford to submit to her a proposal that you or we or they secure a table or booth at the uh, at the soul, taste of soul. I wasn't thinking about so much coming to enjoy ourselves. I was thinking of us having an actual footprint in that event that we could begin to promote and have them promote us. That was my thought, Michael. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no, I got it in my pocket. I thought it was in there. Yeah, no, it, yeah, we can do that. I mean, like I said, this is not. This, okay, this is not the first rodeo. So where? Yeah, I'm in a meeting here. We got the old Anglo National Bank, where they took the money from black folks out of Gold Rush, and, and, and destroyed our communities. And you know, the African founding father who had 35,000 acres, and uh, we don't want to talk about that. He's in the Port of New Orleans. But no, I'm I'm all for the conversation. The challenge is. Because I'm, I'm about to broker a deal with the, the Farm Bureau here because I'm in the we're in the number one ag state. The problem is. At some point. We have to sustain the folks doing the work and, you know, that's not happening. So oh, okay. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to leave it alone for now because I got right. a meeting so I could like, you know, keep I'll, talk to you and, I live. My, my, I'll talk to you at Harvey. Right. Okay. All right. All right. And this is Commissioner Cox, but I, I won't repeat. We've kind of had this conversation several times. I, 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 Commissioner I, I, Kenya, Commissioner Kenya Cox is on too, so I have a little backup today. So, <laughs> all, all I was suggesting was to prepare yeah, the so, so Andrew, prepare. Andrew, yes, it, it's writing to the chairman of the commission. We, I we, understand. Okay, I understand. Thank all you. Right. So, so we write to the chairman of the commission, our, our request. That's correct. And Michael, I believe would be at any rate. Yes, I understand. Thank you. I'm done. Okay. And so people should know that Michael is also on the Sacramento uh, uh, Historical Society. Uh, ah. He, he uh, also uh, has served, uh, okay, uh, like he said, for decades, uh, getting this movement for getting Juneteenth in, and uh, for the uh, he was there originally on Pickford. Uh, okay, uh, he was actually an observer of uh, what happened in 2004, and uh, was around the uh, Pickford uh, uh, case for farming. Yeah, okay, uh, so let's talk about okay one of the things that, that we're talking about. Uh, that's uh, uh, coming to the forefront. Uh, that is uh, on Friday, we're talking about human rights. Uh, so one of the things is that uh, we put in uh, the chat is the letter that went out okay, uh, to members uh, that if you did not get this letter, okay, uh, you will get this letter. If I have... Uh, uh, you are uh, on our mailing list. If you're not on our mailing list, if you did not get that letter, we will then make sure from this conversation that you get tomorrow's agenda. Tomorrow's agenda is going to talk about the permanent form and the issues surrounding the permanent form. And uh, we're going to talk about for the viewpoint of the Biden-Harris administration's vote and the message that the ambassador, okay, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, on the, when she spoke for the United States, on when the United States adopted, she, she voted that way, like I said, because on Friday, there were 800 groups represented, 800 plus groups, 
represented on Friday's call, last Friday's call. And the United States, and, and in terms of making their change on Monday, you have to understand that we need to follow up on that and not just wait for the United States to give us a plan, but rather we need to give them a plan. Now, as you heard earlier with Mary, there's a plan being worked on for Africa. There is also a plan being worked on for the United States. And we're now going to tomorrow, we're going to talk about how those plans come together and the times for workshops that you can participate in the development of the documents. Okay. Yes, share the Google Doc, because tomorrow uh, I would be on the phone. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, I didn't want to press you. <laughs> okay, so but there, there it is. Uh, everybody want, 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 uh, wants to see uh, the work so far uh, for the, you know, and yes, we, we know about the whole idea of naming it the Marshall Plan, okay? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, what our working name is because everybody, when we say the Marshall Plan, uh, they have some understanding of what it is, okay? Okay. Uh, one of the things that I, I do want to get on the table uh, for you who are commissioners, uh, most people don't know who are on this, know what we're talking about in the 400 years commission. Okay, will you tell people what the 400 years commission is and its objectives and uh, its actions? I want to yield to Commissioner Kenya Cox, who is over the education. She's chair, matter of fact, of the Education Committee for the Commission. Are you available, Kenya? She may be multitasking. So the um, I had a whole list that I covered in, in Nicodemus. It's kind of good to to go over it. The um, to hear the details of it because there we have um, uh, several mandates. One has to do, do I have a second to pull it up? Go ahead, you can talk, I'll pull it up for you. Yeah, why don't you pull it up, yeah. Because I, I, and Nicodemus, we read through it and it was even good for me to, to go back and read it. Uh, so um, going back a ways, it was really Tim, K uh, Senator Tim Kaine who, who having been a part of um, some other commissions that commemorated uh, uh, memorable times in different with different ethnic groups. He wanted to do something. He really put it in the hands as well of uh, Congressman Bobby Scott and then Mark Warner. And I think they started back around 2016 or so. But the other commissions that were put in place had probably a three or four year lead. They were put in place and had three or four years to plan. And so when they... Um, finally got hours past the uh, 400 years of African-American history commission. It was in October, 2018 and it was not funded. The other commissions were funded. So, um, but since that time, and we, we were given the task to commemorate uh, in 2019, August 25th, the arrival of the documented arrival of the first uh, enslaved Africans. And I, I think Herschel has mentioned that there was some question around whether it was uh, they were enslaved Africans or indentured, but nonetheless, it still uh, had a certain outcome. So the um, that was a task. We did do that. But then in addition to that, we were to to um, also bring forth and highlight accomplishments of people of African descent over the 400 years, because as you know, you know, uh, I'm sure all of you know that history has not been so honest when it comes to what African people of African descent have done in this country, whether it's inventions that, you know, they were not allowed to have their uh, uh, trademarks or whatever, what, what was taken over or, and then also some, the tragedy of, uh, of slavery itself. So to highlight all of what happened to us basically over these last 400 years. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the mandates was to also do research, have organizations that were uh, not-for-profit to, um, 
to bring forth information around research and uh, as it relates to these different areas, and even to include people who are not of African descent, those who played a part, because we know, I think uh, John, was it John Moss? Someone, or someone in Nicodemus as well talked about how um, uh, the Native Americans were critical in helping the first <clears throat> African Americans when they arrived in Nicodemus to survive that winter. And so we had several people and, and uh, the, the first individuals that the 20 encountered in order to stay afloat and stay alive or whatever. They depended on certain uh, people, Harry Tubman, of course, with some of the people that she encountered. But in addition to that, we were to give out uh, grants to not-for-profits as well. And, and the, I think it was the budget office, congressional bu budget office. Uh, Hershel, you may know the uh, uh, appropriate term for, but I think it was congressional budget office had uh, estimated the cost of our mandates to be about six million. And so not being funded, but we our first year we actually managed to do fairly well. And um, there's more to that. But anyway, so we have given out the second year we were we were the first year we were supposed to end uh, go through 2019 and sunset July 1st in 2020, but it was extended. When it was extended in 2020, we were then funded at the amount of 3.3 million. And then it was to sunset in July 1st, 2021, which is, a, you know, would have been last month, but they extended us again to 2022. So did you pull it up? Because I would like to go through line by line. So what people can find, if you find it in the yeah, mandate it's in, somewhere. It's in, it's in and then I'll go yeah. ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the, um, the makeup of the commission. Um, okay. We have 15 uh, commissioners, three who are appointed by governors, we have uh, six members that um, are, they're appointed by or representing, excuse me, represented um, civil rights organization and historical organizations. One member is uh, appointed or represents the National Park Service. And uh, two members are appointed by the secretary um, and they are members uh, from the um, Smithsonian Institute and then three members um, are um, experts um, that are appointed um, by the, um, oops, sorry. They are appointed, appointed in interest in support for and expertise appropriate to the commemoration. And they are appointed by the secretary after considering the recommendation of members of Congress. And so there are 15 uh, members of us serving and as uh, Commissioner A. Cox went through, um, our term is through uh, the sun setting in July of 2022. Part of our uh, charge has been, and if you don't have it up yet, um, it is to develop and carry out programs and activities throughout the United States appropriate with the commemoration. And we're always very clear that we say commemoration. It's not a celebration. It is a commemoration, commemorating, re uh, recognizing, remembering, and highlighting the resiliency and the contributions of African-Americans since 1619 and, and forward to acknowledge the impact that slavery and the laws that enforce racial discrimination had on the United States and to educate the public about the arrival uh, of Africans in the United States and the contributions of African Americans to the United States to encourage civic, patriotic, historical, educational, artistic, religious, economic, and other organizations throughout the United States to organize and participate in the anniversary activities to expand understanding and appreciation of the significance of the arrival of Africans in the United States and the contributions of African-Americans to the United States to provide technical assistance to states, localities and nonprofit organizations to further the commemoration. And then the grants, Kenya? Uh, Yes, 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 Commissioner. And the, the grants, what are the grants for? Because we did give out some grants last year and, and this year. I don't have the list uh, before me, 
But um, the no, I mean, the, uh, the definition of who the second page, I think, of one of our documents, I don't have it in front of me. But anyway, it's on the screen. Oh, is it? OK. I need to pull my screen over then, huh? Yeah, I wanted to know who the secretary, you said the secretary appointed some of the commissioners, secretary of court department. Interior. Thank you. So the links to their, their website uh, is in the uh, chat. Uh, the links to, they, they have their own website and then the National Park Service website. And so both links are in the chat. And we're privileged to have two, two of the 15 commissioners on the call currently. And that information on the commissioners is in the chat also. But to answer your question, uh, the grants are to communities and nonprofit organizations, develop programs, grants to research and scholarly organizations to research, publish, or distribute information about the arrival of Africans in the United States and technical assistance to states localities and nonprofit organizations. And someone asked the question, how, how were people selected? Uh, I guess who, who did the uh, Department of Interior? I can say this because when I found out about it in January, 2018, I got on my email and uh, did an email blast for three months, encouraging people that I thought, so, uh, so I've had people ask, um, well, you know, sometimes people will get their, you know, they'll appoint their friends or someone that they know or they select people. But really, uh, this was one that if someone were interested, now I know they vetted us, they've talked to us about all the vetting that they did because they took quite a bit of time to go through and research everybody. However, I spent three months myself sending out emails and trying to encourage people to apply. And once they found there was no pay because we are we are special government employees, uncompensated is our title. And so once they got the last word on there, then I couldn't get anybody that I knew that I thought really would have been great on there to do it. And so it is just, just an encouragement. If you see something, and of course this group knows that you already know this because you're already doing it. That if you see something you're interested in, you know, go for it. I think the other thing that, that is very important is to really stress the, the scope of representation that we have on the commission. We have individuals from the faith community. We have in, individuals from the arts and culture. Um, we have civic, um, social, um, uh, civil rights organization, um, people in, from those um, um, organizations. We have um, um, the secretary of the Smithsonian, um, Lonnie Bunch, who was the first um, um, director of the African-American um, Museum in Washington, DC. They made sure that we had a variety, vast representation. Tulsa, of, we have someone from Tulsa. Uh, yes, from, from Tulsa, uh, attorneys, different from different walks Authors. of life so that mm -hmm. we could make sure that we spoke to um, the wide uh, uniqueness of African-Americans in the United States. Sometimes we only have representatives from uh, one um, arena and they really wanted to be sure that that we had uh, representation from, I, I'd say from the greatest to the greatest. I won't say from the least to the greatest. I'll say from the greatest <laughs> to the greatest. So um, a, a variety of individuals that um, that I think has really uh, given us a, a, an opportunity to have a unique impact um, during this uh, pivotal time. There's a question in the chat. Yeah, just so I just want everybody to know that they operate under rules of the Federal Advisory Committee Act. And so there's a whole GSA law infrastructure. And like uh, Commissioner Cox said, when people find out that it's not paid and that there are rules of what they can and cannot do, that are rather extensive, people say, well, it's not for me. 
but the work that they did, that they came in in a crucial time, and that this was signed January 8th, 2018. It's a law. That means it was passed by the House and the Senate, sent to the president, signed into law. And then it continued for the people to serve on the committee. I know people that they went through their Congress people I mean, if, if people who knew about this wanted to serve, then they found out that this was real work. This wasn't just showboating. And uh, let's just say that it, it, it has turned out how it is. I didn't actually know that the commission was still in business because it sunsetted July of 2020 under the law. And when COVID hit, I said it was sunsetting. We're going to go continue for doing the Black Family Reunion on August 25th, 2020, to set the marker for 2021, August 25th. And lo and behold, y'all are still operating. So, uh, you know, we we know who to write write to. You made clear on the conversations and. I know what the law is. I'd love to uh, work with you. Yes, John. Well, actually, before you get to John, just to let you know, we're approaching our two-hour mark. And for recording purposes, we're about at the, uh, we need to either restart or we need to be able to wind down to make sure we're able to upload this to YouTube. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was going to say that. Okay. And so I'm sure uh, John was going to come on to ask about, uh, uh, were you gonna ask any questions on the subject matter? Yeah, just real quick question. Um, first, thank you for your work. I believe, I understand as a nonprofit that doesn't get paid. And that's the same challenge I run into where people are like, oh, that sounds great. What do we do? How do we make money? And then they back away. So um, my question is similar to the Potawatomi tribe with Kansas, is there is there something that collaboratively is a grant that tells the story of of the involvement of both um of our indigenous people if you will that we might qualify for as a support to get the word out for everything because by that i mean i may know some tribes like the potawatomi that may want to get involved because they have some funds of their own the great news john is that your task is to submit the proposal to the commission. It's not their task to tell you what you're qualified for. So, and I yeah, will but say my, that there was a great John. The <laughs> there was a great there was a great program that was presented a number of years ago, um, maybe two years or three years ago, at the Brown uh, National Park site, which was called the Tale of Two Nations. And it really spoke to the uh, the brotherhood between uh, Native and African Americans and um, the, um, the the trail of tears, how um, Africans and um, Natives, how they how they made that journey uh, together. And so I think, again, part of our job is highlighting that history and telling some of those lesser known stories. So if you do have, um, if you have someone or if you have uh, some documentation or something, we really do encourage you to submit that um, uh, to the commission. I, if you can get me that information on the story just mentioned. And, and yes, I do, and as I yes, mentioned I in Herschel knows. Haskell um, University, University with Dr. Wildcat, as I mentioned regarding the Nicodemus call, we are very interested in doing more, interested more in support of this, support especially of with what's going on. Okay. So, and actually, well, no, Nick, Nicodemus is they, they did receive a grant from the 400 Commission. I mentioned the other day a $10,000 grant. $10,000 grant, and, and it was a great grant. What we're going to do is that we're going to ask, okay, 
uh, His Excellency uh, Sharif, if he will uh, close down this portion of the meeting uh, so that we will make the time portion uh, for YouTube. And so then we'll start the report. So you're asking uh, His Excellency Sharif to make a closing remark to this yeah. to this yes. session? Yes. So His Excellency Sharif Balde, can you give us a closing to this portion? And then we'll begin recording again. If you're still with us, Sharif. I think he just dropped off. He may come back. I mean, I don't know. It just kind of disappeared. Yeah, I just asked him to do that. Okay, so. No worries. Then let uh, me, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and just, uh, just, just wind this up here. And just no, I'll, 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 I'll uh, Bernice, will, will you uh, wind this up, please? Okay. Yes, Kenya. Uh, and will you, Commission, Commissioner Cox, can you wind us up? You there, Kenya? I think she's multitasking. At, at I was thinking maybe he was talking to you, Prophet Cox. Um, I, think he, I, I think he meant K Cox. We have okay. A Cox and K Cox on the commission. <laughs> <laughs> and no, kidding. he was looking at K Cox. We All did. Right. We, I will uh, <laughs> just close this out in prayer. Is that what you're yes. asking? Yes, I am. Okay. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus that we serve, Lord, asking you, Lord, for your continued guidance, your wisdom, and your divine strength, for Lord, to continue to accomplish all that you have called us to do. Father, help us to grow in wisdom and strength and in knowledge, Lord, and influence. Help our, our endeavors, Lord, to manifest in such a way that they bless those that we represent throughout the United States. Father, we will be uh, sure to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in the name of Jesus Christ, whom we serve. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen and amen. amen. Uh -huh. Thank you all, right. all very much. Ashe. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So do we need to re-log in or no, no just just be no just just be just be patient. Just one second, please. Thousand one. Well, Herschel Daniels, the recording is in progress. You have your share screen, so now's your time to give us the introduction to, to this portion. This portion is going to okay. Uh cover the Indigenous Peoples Plan. And the Indigenous Peoples Plan is a plan of action that is part of our work at the United Nations. And the creation on April 29th of the Indigenous Peoples Alliance, which is to be African-Americans with partnership with Native Americans and Indigenous people of the Americas, okay, Indigenous people of Africa, Indigenous people of Asia and Indigenous people of Oceania as our principal focus. There are other Indigenous people in Europe that is not our focus. The alliance that we created said that our headquarters would be 477 West 142nd Street in New York City, which is at an intersection of American history on the first floor. That is based on Queen Mother Dr. Dolores Blakely having both a African-American, African, Native American, tripartite heritage. And the work that she's done to make this the first floor 
a focus of our work in New York City as our headquarters. Now, the Indigenous Peoples Alliance is to be made up of over 4 billion potential members, starting with the over 30 million people of African descent here in the United States who qualify as an indigenous person under the rules of the United Nations. It includes in Native Americans over, uh, I used the, the old term 4.7 million people, it's actually 7.7 .7 million Native Americans. Indigenous people of the Americas, okay, it's over 70 million people. Indigenous people of Africa, over 1.2 billion. Indigenous people of Asia, over 2 billion people. And indigenous people of Oceania, over 41 million people. This is the proposed infrastructure and the graphics that I'm using for this. Does everybody? understand what do you think of the graphics let's let's get some feedback first what do you think of the graphic i think it's good yes it's clean and it's informative all right so currently in the indigenous peoples uh of the united nations permanent forum on indigenous issues of those 4 billion people, only 375 million only 375 million of them are represented in the United Nations currently. And we're, we're on the call from last night, so if you want to come on, you can go on last, uh, from the call last night. So the whole idea next year is to add people and to add people, okay, is to create a unified, cohesive, cooperative global economic plan that's based on a secure digital environment and command, control, communications, computing, connectivity, cryptology, and cash transactions for the world's indigenous people, first structured as part of a permanent forum on people of African descent because the African Union earlier this year said of the five tasks that they assigned to us as people of African descent, that they wanted us this month <coughs> to give them a proposal. And so we have a proposal in creation that we will be giving them by uh, August 24th which is the African diaspora financial framework. And so by the 21st, uh, sorry, by the 25th of this month, the whole idea is, is that we will have created a cooperative, the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative that would join by August 25th, the National Community Reinvestment Coalition as well as the cooperative movement worldwide in line with the ethical <laughs> values of honesty, openness, corporate social responsibility, and caring for others. Questions? After each page, I'm going to ask that. Okay, questions? Hearing none, I will go on. Everybody knows what a cooperative is, right? All right, so the cross-cutting topics covered by the cooperative is creating intergenerational wealth, creating international trade program with African nations, creating safe communities, creating affordable, sustainable housing, creating smart living coalitions, implementing erasing the digital divide programming, providing best of class healthcare solutions, integrating next generation civic infrastructure, addressing systematic racism, 
economic injustice and advancing global human rights while creating a next generation workforce. Questions, additions that should be added. Now I know that each one of these have an education component to it. I just, um, I know like with the UNESCO, there's the education and science and all that, but where is there an area specific with that or am I missing it? I'm trying to go through it quickly as you're reading it. Okay, yeah. So education is one of those cross-cutting topics in each one of those. So that's one of those cross-cutting topics that uh, 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 covers the, Think of these as silos and think of education as a horizontal strip that goes across all the silos. So, and maybe addressing systemic racism, knowing our history, you know, and, and uh, correcting uh, the misinformation or whatever that would probably fall in there as well. Yeah, well, addressing systematic racism economic injustice and advancing global human rights. <laughs> what we use is the universal periodic review as a tool, but yes, uh, uh, addressing that. So uh, we're actually part of a, uh, of a uh, coalition of groups that uh, uh, are addressing that uh, issue. There's about a hundred of us in that group that addressed it from the whole idea of addressing systematic racism and economic justice through utilization of the law. And uh, I'll, I'll gladly uh, uh, give you, you know, the connections to it. We look forward uh, to your comments. In terms of education, just, just throw this up, but I know just in listening to you and Michael that you have extensive knowledge around history that kind of goes beyond what the average person knows much about. So I just, uh, just like we're delving, doing a deep, deep dive into the health piece with some uh, different options. So I would hope that we would do that when it comes to um, well, so, systemic racism, but really, the, the, uh, you know, what the foundation of who we are kind of thing. So, so here, here's what the letter to the uh, commission will be reading next week. The letter will ask the commission, well, first it'll tell the commission, we're glad that, uh, thank you that, that you're still in existence. Uh, second, uh, we will tell the commission what we did on August 25th, 2019 to set the stake uh, for what we're asking the commission to participate in this year. Uh, that, that's food for me? No, okay, great. Uh, and third, what we're, what we're doing is, is that we asking the commission to be a, a partner in going to one of uh, the USDA and to formally ask the USDA to write a $12 million check uh, for the startup of a creation of a model of the United States that focuses on agriculture from August 25th, 1619, which means all the lands that are owned at that time, except for the colony lands to create a economic model using CPAs as the core. We have one in Tulsa and we have one in uh, uh, Hamilton County as our basis to create an economic model of the United States from August 25th, 1619 through August 25th, 2019. That would create that model showing the first international business of America was agriculture. Showing that international business, the methods of management of that international business then can be quantified based on the records that are extensive, so we can create a model, so we could show how important people of African descent were and are. Yes, Excuse Andy. me, Herschel, I disconnected the screen. 
so that perhaps if you could be so kind, because this is a very extensive presentation, uh, if I could ask Elder Cox and others to put your comments in the chat as we proceed so that you can complete the entire presentation and then we can address those issues primarily for housekeeping and time time sensitive material for our rebroadcast. This is a very important presentation. So if I could ask your indulgence, please. Thank you. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. All right. So that that is the short of what we will what we will be doing uh, in the letter. That's that's on the table right now. Uh, as of June 9th with the uh, USDA. Herschel, uh, yes. could you please complete the presentation and then address that issue? Sure, I'm, I'm gonna finish this and then I, I will. Uh, so that's on the table right now, $12 million, $9 million a month, $120 million. Secretary can cut the check. So that's what's coming to the commission next week. So for the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative, the whole idea is to first create, it's now time to mobilize around a healthcare plan for healthcare workers, professionals, and solutions worldwide, because we're, we're headed right into uh, a terrible winter, okay? And so the whole idea of creating a trillion dollar healthcare plan. There's no better time to do that than right now. And so that's one of the main functions of us creating the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative is to create a healthcare cooperative. Questions? They'll put the questions in the chat, please continue. All right, the Indigenous People Alliance and a domestic uh, program. So this is an update that was given on March 20th, 2021, uh, that uh, you know, most people didn't know that uh, people, uh, Native Americans, okay, uh, are get paid about 30 to $35 billion, depending on who is in the government uh, for a, a year. But the United States in itself is worth $270 trillion right now. Okay, and so 30 billion a year on a worth of $270 trillion is a great deal for the United States. It's a terrible uh, a deal for Native Americans. Uh, so- Agreed, agreed. What, what will they do through Indigenous People Alliance through the United States Department of Agriculture? Well, we base it on you know, what happened in November after election day with the National Congress for American Indians, uh, so who demanded uh, a reconciliation back to the basic fun, fun, uh, foundational principles of, upon which this country is built. Principles like justice, like equality, like liberty, like freedom, and, and freedom to just live as our ancestors have lived when time began. The, the problem is, is, is that the concept of collective ownership of the land, which is a Native American trait, which is an African uh, trait, uh, is not a European trait. And it's definitely not an American trait of, uh, uh, in the 21st century of rugged capitalism. And so within that context, uh, we started to put together the Indigenous Peoples Plan Update, a capitalist-based solution for economic justice that solve, that creates peace in the hood. In this case, the hood uh, can be a Native American reservation, but as well as an urban hood with Native Americans, okay, and Indigenous people while creating jobs in the hood that answers human rights questions, all done with a digital currency. So on March 4th, the Biden administration took control of the United Nations Review of Human Rights uh, from uh, the uh, previous administration. Uh, in other words, the United States last issued updates on the Human Rights uh, Review 
of the United States through the United Nations Review on November 12th, when the State Department responded to our unsolicited proposal called the Black Folks Plan. Now in 2021, with our partners that we're going to create a joint venture, the Indigenous Peoples Plan update. Now this update is based on the Obama-Biden presidency when there was over 300 recommendations to change human rights in the United States in 2015. So they got so many recommendations, they said, we're just gonna count it one through 10. We're gonna say, what's our number one problem in human rights that the world sees all the way down to 10. And so the number one human rights problem was civil rights, ethnic and racial discrimination. Number two, criminal justice. And number three, indigenous issues. Okay, but they also say in number 10, treaties and other international human rights mechanisms. Just for your information, in 2015, when we submitted the $5 trillion solution uh, for black folk, we also uh, submitted a $3 trillion for Africa based on the uh, Treaty of Berlin of 1885, which after World War I became American law. Could you please read all 10 of those for the audience that can't read them? Well, it's, Andrew, why don't you, you read it? Yes, number one, <clears throat> civil rights, ethnic and racial discrimination. Number two, criminal justice issues. Number three, indigenous issues. Number four, national security. Number five, immigration. Number six, labor and trafficking. Number seven, economic, social and cultural rights and measures. Number eight, the environment. Number nine, domestic implementation of human rights. And number 10, and international human rights. And 10, mechanism. treaties and international human rights mechanisms. Exactly, yes. Thank you. Next. And so this, this is that statement that I said the AG had of the United Nations uh, said, we started this work in 2014 with New Future Foundation because the AG of the, sec the, the Secretary General Herschel. of the United Nations. Herschel, could you please complete the presentation? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completing it. Thank you. So that the Secretary General of the United Nations has said, this work has great potential to promote and protect human rights in the darkest corners of the world. And so we know power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, it never will. But we also know that it's so difficult to create something new. And so the Indigenous Peoples Plan draws on the framework and authority used by the Black Folks Plan and embeds a superset of the work done in the creation of the Agenda 2063 and the Sustainable uh, Development Goals. So on November 12th, when we submitted our plan on November 9th and the uh, State Department responded, to our unsolicited proposal, they gave us a format, a format for the Indigenous Peoples Plan, okay? And so the Indigenous Peoples Plan now is a, a process that says that we can, over the next 75 years, create a trillion dollar debt assets, public-private partner solutions using the Daniels IDIQ too which addresses the damage incurred by past and current federal government actions is based on the president's answers to the United Nations Universal Periodic Review of the United States in 2020 and 2021, along with Executive Order 13985, officially titled Advancing Racial Equity and Support for Underserved Communities Through the Federal Government. Okay, so the president, has the authority to do by himself what we are asking. He does not need Congress to pass any additional laws, okay? And so the whole idea in when you're doing this is if you take the, this saying, yeah, it's a long page, but when you get just down to it, okay, uh, it, it's a source saying that for Native Americans, no, we're not looking at the American dream. And why should we? 
we still haven't woke up from the American nightmare. This land used to be all theirs. It isn't anymore. And so the indigenous people's plan is that wake up call for the Biden administration can do now. No congressional action needed. So we started this plan and we actually submitted in 2016 when we uh, were meeting with the State Department uh, based off of the financing for development uh, process for the sustainable development goals at the third international conference on financing for development in July 2015 in Addis Ababa. Uh, we added a, a process saying for the $1 trillion damage uh, incurred by past and current federal government racism against Native Americans. And so when we originally uh, put this together, we gave a use of proceeds for that $1 trillion uh, and we called 30 billion of it, my brother's keeper and a Native American Alliance. And so now in 2021, this is the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative Capitalization. So out of this funds, there will be over a hundred and a billion dollars or 10% of this funds that will be available to indigenous people uh, internationally uh, for in, in the Americas, uh, for those uh, people uh, uh, who are Native Americans, okay, yes, domestically, but also for those who are indigenous people who are here in America. And by our Pew figures, it's somewhere around 10 million people currently who are indigenous people who are uh, from the Americas who are here and are undocumented. And so through the whole idea of, uh, in support of people of African descent in the Indigenous Peoples Alliance, uh, this was a special focus now, remember when we were putting this together, uh, we're five days into the permanent form. When we were putting this together, starting on uh, April 10th, we were hoping for the creation in May of the permanent uh, form for African uh, uh, people of African descent. That was the schedule. Uh, I spoke at the United Nations uh, on April 9th and as part of this work, well, it, it, did, it didn't look like that was gonna happen. So what we made sure that we included that the update of our 2015 work of $5 trillion at the United States Universal Periodic Review uh, on uh, uh, 2015 and the meeting with the State Department in 2016, uh, that uh, when the President uh, Biden uh, uh, was then vice president and that the United States decided not to do the deal uh, because in terms of that, we did not have agreements with the banks to show them what the deal looked like. We were still negotiating those when we had the meeting with the State Department. We did not get our first major agreement with us as a signature until November 18th, uh, 2016, uh, uh, okay. And so uh, what we did is we updated that, okay, uh, based on the meeting with the State Department, based on the, uh, when President Trump said in remarks at the 2019 National Historic Black Colleges and Universities Week Conference on September 10th, 2019, the first and highest duty of government is to take care of its own citizens. African-Americans built this nation through generations of blood, sweat, and tears. And you, like all our citizens, are entitled to a government that puts your needs, your interest, and your families first. So we said that, look, this is what he said. We were holding him accountable. We're going to meet, okay, next year with the uh, State Department to do an update. And we're gonna do it because we agree with Dr. Martin Luther King who said, Freedom is never voluntary given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. And so when we did this, 
we had already done the background and put it into the United Nations uh, as civil society uh, for groups of, uh, who had done data for racial justice submissions. Uh, we were one of the groups, Friends of the African Union here, uh, that submitted and the countries that submitted, uh, Bolivia, Poland, Sweden, Guyana, Mexico, Mali, Colombia, and Guatemala were among the countries who submitted. And so this universal periodic review has a process every four and a half year cycle. So we're in the third cycle of the universal periodic review of the United States right now. And so the originators of this, okay, is Queen Mother, Dr. Dolores Blakely and New Future Foundation and Friends of the African Union. And together, it's a process that is accepted by the US government, even the Trump administration decided to participate in the Universal Periodic Review. And we submitted two documents in the process, one on the solution for black folks, and we call it the Black Folks Plan, and two, a solution for injustice for women, judges, and the school to prison pipeline. And so when I said that the United States, the Biden administration took over for uh, March, uh, the acting assistant secretary of state for democracy, human rights and labor uh, spoke at uh, Geneva on the uh, review of the universal periodic review to give the basis for the Trump administration, excuse me, for the Biden administration uh, from the Trump administration. Then on the 17th of May, okay, uh, that the, the United Nations Human Rights Council wrote to uh, okay, uh, the Secretary of State. And by the way, the uh, Biden administration has now issued an open invitation to the Human Rights Council to come to the United States. So in terms of uh, a fundamental issue of the Indigenous People Alliance is to talk about uh, food and food in terms of, you know, if you don't uh, able to feed yourself, then anything else that people are talking about uh, goes uh, by the wayside. And so here in America, there is funds for black farmers to restart black farming in America on a major scale. In other words, we're down to less than 50,000 black farmers where in 1920, we used to have 900,000, according to the census. And so we lost $120 billion worth of assets uh, during that period from 1920 to 2018. Now, this is not my saying, this is a tough study. So what we started this year off is creating the seven tiers of the Black Folks Plan for Black Farmers that uses three sets of funds, funds from the American Rescue Plan Act, funds from the farm credit system, and the over 298 billion in federal reserve bank-based community benefit agreements. So the uh, poor people who are indigenous people uh, through the created uh, plan of people of African descent. And so our aim is to end poverty in the country with a focus on native American community, second only to the black community and then people of color. And again, I refer back to executive order 13985, okay? And so the founding members of our organization, Friends of the African Union, African Diaspora Directorate, started the International Association for People with Disabilities, okay? Uh, through which uh, the International okay, People's Alliance will serve the world's over 500 million indigenous people with disabilities, okay, from a headquarters in Lawton, Oklahoma, all right? And so uh, we were uh, working, this was our original agreement between Cash Community Development and Friends of the African Union uh, to work out of uh, uh, our agreement in uh, uh, Fort Coffee, Oklahoma. And so the creation of the Indigenous People Alliance, real estate development, farming, livestock, and fishing, food processing and manufacture, 
food service and retail sales and franchises. Okay, now, uh, again, this, this is in the process of, of change uh, because Andrew has just closed the window. <laughs> so it's in the process of change. All right. I didn't intend to close the window. I apologize. Please go right ahead. All right. Technical uh, glitch on my part. <laughs> so the whole idea where where we're going from this is based on the work that we we have just completed in Tulsa. Okay. And based on that work, uh, when we held uh, this uh, event, okay, I just want you to understand uh, this. We held this event in Tulsa based on the work, and this is where we last left it yesterday, based on the work out of Chilton County and, and there was on March 22nd, there was a Zoom talk, Black Farmers to applaud the 5 billion and USDA uh, debt relief included uh, COVID stimulus law. Uh, we, we thought that the people who were holding the call had actually read the, the law, not okay, the law that was signed on March 11th, not the bill that these senators okay, had supported in uh, December, okay, and Senator Warnock obviously didn't get it elected until the fifth. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, we were so wrong. We thought the Black Belt Justice, okay, uh, which was uh, is headed by a lawyer, okay, uh, an environmental working group which has lawyers and was in the Pickford. We thought that they actually had read the law, okay. And so uh, our head of our uh, chapter in uh, Chilton, okay, uh, you know, we wanted to thank the sponsors, okay? So we submitted uh, for the record uh, this document working. But then by March 25th, uh, we actually knew uh, what, what was at, in the actual law. We actually had a four-step process. And so there was a virtual hearing. And we also knew that this gentleman, is the first black head of the agriculture committee. Now remember all of the agriculture committee of all American farmers in the house, he's the head man, he's the chairman. This includes the money from the foreign agricultural service. Okay, that's the money that the United States uses for supporting our grain exports our livestock exports, our fishery exports, okay, and deals with all this. So he's in charge of, of the budget that was just recently passed uh, for the agriculture department in the Biden administration, all right? And uh, in the 1997, a group of black farmers, including uh, Bernice Atchison, uh, were part of a class action lawsuit against the USDA over the agency's discrimination against black farmers. They won that, okay? They, they put it together, they won it, okay? But they lost uh, because over 66,000 black farmers did not get a penny, all right? Uh, it, was, it was such a, a, a mess that as a matter of fact, from the original billion dollars, Congress revisited again put another billion dollars on the table in 2004 when Bernice was summoned to Congress to testify, okay, on why there was no notice uh, uh, on the no notice hearing. Uh, uh, nothing came of it, okay? Uh, there, there's nothing, and so now uh, they're talking about this $5 billion in debt relief for black farmers, and they're telling a lie. The people who are talking about this are telling a lie. It does not say anything in the law about black farmers. It's, it, it says, okay, all right. Uh, unfortunately, that's in the narrative. But, you know, 
again, when Biden chose uh, Bill Sack, uh, he wanted somebody at USDA with deep knowledge of department operations. Okay. And so on a Zoom meeting with farmers of color, uh, he said, we saw this as an opportunity with this COVID package to begin the process of righting so many uh, wrongs. Yes, that's true, but it does not mention black farmers specifically, okay? And so when we started in terms of the creation of this in Chilton County, uh, the whole idea of this movement was to restart not only our farming here, but with our indigenous people's allies that in the basis between black folk and Native Americans, that we can go forward in terms of uh, feeding a people worldwide through the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Co-op, uh, starting based on the work uh, in uh, Chilton County and the strategic uh, partnership with a foundational historic Black college and university partner uh, that I'm talking to, uh, one in Florida and one in uh, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, maybe other states, uh, but it's around this man who on November 24th, 1873, uh, sat on the Agriculture Committee, the first black man to ever sit on the US House Agriculture Committee. I'll stop there and uh, where we say our core education values and so Commissioner Cox, th this is what the basis of us in our educational, whether it's academic excellence, cutting edge research, impactful international relations, lifelong learning, integrity, transparency, accountability, fiscal responsibility, inclusive diversity, a restorative justice as part of our vision is to connect with colleges to be a premier 21st century world-class coalition with innovative programs that have global impact. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we're going to start uh, first an agriculture, food and rural community institute uh, named after uh, Representative Richard Harvey K. Questions? All right, Andrew. Uh, thank you. Uh, comment <clears throat> right here when we're dealing with education and I now see that you're dealing with at least one historically black college and university. What I'm suggesting is that we expand our vision and understand that just as there are historically black college and university, there is an association of indigenous colleges and universities as well. There is a, an association of Hispanic colleges and universities as well. If we are in fact addressing this issue from, from an indigenous people's alliance, I suggest that we connect that dot. And uh, I, I agree with you, okay? So when we originally did this for uh, the uh, uh, permanent forum on people of African descent, uh, and we decided that we were going to expand uh, for uh, beyond just black folk. So just this format that we did at the African Diaspora Directorate for formatting the Secretary for Agriculture Council, uh, that, that you know we, we changed this around that uh, uh, Native Americans, yes, uh, Pacific Islanders, yes, Asian Americans, uh, yes, and, and each, so yes, uh, what, you're, what you're talking about is to, and this is how uh, we envisioned originally these local equity commissions would be, or local, but yes, we, we agree with you. Additional questions? Well, Andrew, there what, seems what to happened be to all the Herschel? What happened to all the pages we're sharing about cash community and our involvement and all of that being in the indigenous people's plan? I didn't see any of those pages. 
Yeah, they're they're still they're still here. I, I, I went over a part of them uh, the other day. Well, let me let me ask you first, Herschel, if this is a good time to end this recording and begin another one. I like to keep this in in chunks. Yep, this is a good this is a good start. Okay, I'm gonna stop and start again. So, John, do you have uh, your uh, your copy? No, sir, and I don't know how to share on Facebook. I use a different format than Facebook. Is it on your uh, website, John? If I could show your website. We, on the website is what we presented at the United Nations. If it's in there, Herschel, then yes, that's the yeah, plan. Yeah. That we'll... Okay, then give me just a moment and I'll, uh, I'll bring it up. It's in the chat as well. If that yes, but we, we have a very extensive chat here. I think we have over 100 comments. So if you can put it at the bottom, I'll be have to click the link. But we have an extensive chat today, John. I have a I question. Yes, go ahead. Um, and for, for uh, John Moss for his presentation, I know he posted, um, I think, a video or something that uh, I haven't gotten to, but I want to. I guess it's, for me, it's been a sort of a long day, long night. And I, um, I guess I would hope that at some point you'll do it like a kind of um, early in the three hour cycle, <laughs> just because for my brain, it's. Uh, we're, I've been we're doing. Gonna, we're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to do it. This is going to be the early cycle tomorrow. Okay, yeah, because I would like to hear it. Uh, I'm interested in economics and all the, some of these things, and so it'd be good to have it fresh. I um, you know, just so that was just. I mean, he, maybe a summary or something tonight, but any in depth, detail things, you know, just. Uh, uh, and I don't want to speak for everyone else, but it would be helpful to me. And if you have a video or something else that maybe I can augment it with if you do it tonight. So we're going to give you a link in the chat where it's already posted on the website. And so uh, this, uh, I, what I'll tell you what I will do is I will put a short stream video tomorrow uh, for that. How is that? Yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll do, I'll take this and I can take a uh, short stream, 15 minute uh, start of the call tomorrow uh, video. That's great. And I have to say, I'm so impressed with you, uh, Herschel, and your ability to consume and deliver information over uh, numerous hours. It, uh, one, because it's so interesting, but I would like to have something like that, and if you can post something, because I during the day when I get a few minutes, I'm still working on some family issues. I would like to get more familiar with with uh, the program. And John, you're going to share some information too uh, 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 with the 400 Commission you mentioned to Kenya. So we'll look forward to that as well. Yes, we'll be following up and working together. Yes, with Herschel and all that. Absolutely. Herschel, I'll stop recording. Let me know when you want me to begin recording again. Okay. Uh, John, okay. Uh, what I, Is it in the chat? Do you have it, Andrew? I have his website. Do you want me to go there? Yeah, go to his website and you got Cash Community Development. And you have the United Nations portion. I have the website. Tell me where to go. All right. You scroll down and it has on the front page, uh, uh, click here for United Nations PDF. <clears throat> Is that okay? I'll keep scrolling towards the end. I have no idea where it is. All right. Hold on. It'll be right at the top oh, in okay. the orange tab. Yeah, donate mentions. now. That's always your, your first shot, John. Donate now. I know. No, 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 no. The orange <laughs> tab at the bottom. No. It says, sorry, it says Native Leaders Launch Indigenous People's Plan at UN. Oh, yeah, yeah. The other orange one. Okay. Yes, and you're so welcome to it. donate if you want to. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay, it says download, so I'm downloading it now. Give me just a moment. Okay. 
I, I'm sorry, Andrew. I thought that you had it. Okay. No uh, worries. And and just since everyone, just real quick, when you do go to the donate page, it mentions many of the different projects that we're working on, including with um, FAU and et cetera, and the um, longest walk, suicide prevention, et cetera. So there's, there's a lot of different things. So when people donate, they can pick a particular project and it goes there. Well, okay. John, consider this your, your segment. So when we get through with this presentation, perhaps you'll walk us through your donate page and you can share with us that information. But I have it on the screen now. So, All right, so John, this is gonna be your walkthrough because I am, I've got to get something to eat. So walk through. So John, this is your presentation. You know all the you know how to make the presentation here, right? So Andrew, no, Andrew, if you if you will turn the pages for him. Of course. Okay. All right. Uh, he'll give you the verbalization. Okay, uh, very good. That. I'm gonna begin. I'm gonna begin in recording. And then I'm going to uh, turn it over to you, John, just a minute. And it won't be as thorough as what Herschel, who put it together with us, so, but I'll do my best. Okay, let's see here. Now, I'm, I need to share a screen. Uh, uh, I think, is this the correct page, John? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, very good. Instruct me and I'll, I'll, I'll scroll through. I'm gonna put myself on mute. I think I've begun recording. Let me double check here. I may or may not have, just a second. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see, record, record. I don't see my record key. Hold on just a second here. Record to the cloud. Okay, I'm gonna begin recording. And I appreciate everyone's patience. I'll do as good as I can. Recording is in progress. This is Andrew Williams Jr. <clears throat> brought to you by the Ed Fu Foundation with Friends of the African Union, the African Diaspora Directorate, and our collaboration with the Indigenous Peoples Alliance, headed up by Mr. John Moss, who's our moderator. The floor is yours, John. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. So um, my name's John Moss again from um, Cash Community Development. I'm a member of the Caddo Indian Nation. We originally did a presentation, which isn't here, but in the United Nations, May 20th um, of 2016. And then again, back up one, please. Yeah, or slide down, there you go. And this was, again, presented through the official format um, of the United Nations with the help of Queen Mother, Herschel Daniels, and, and others. And we presented this presentation, which is downloadable on my website, and then our website, Cash Community, and then you can go through it at your leisure. But this, this page here, um, is where we talked about the Indigenous Peoples Alliance with the table of contents. As you can see, it is quite extensive and touching on many of the same slides that we've shared in other presentations, but I wanted to um, go through this so everyone can see what is actual, what was submitted and present, presented on April 29th at the United Nations. And again, in follow up with um, many other people. And next slide. Appreciate your help on that, Andrew. And again, this is the permanent forum where it was presented at the United Nations in, of Indigenous Issues. And this was this year again in 2021. Next slide. And this, as you saw, was the lady that is um, 
presented the presentation on the floor of the United Nations regarding the challenges and issues that were brought up in detail as she has for indigenous people. Next slide. Is there a way you can make that a little bigger, Andrew? Because I'm squinting here. I'll see, John. Let's see here. Now, I did put the link to this in the chat, but I'll also try to make it bigger. Thank you. But, yeah, just a moment. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's the button. I can make it that big. That's okay. That's better. Thank you. Whoops. Hold on. Okay, so there. And again, we're just touching on these slides. So I encourage everybody to, you know, take time to read through everything later. But um, again, these are the different people that were presenting uh, presenting on that day, and we'll get to some others where we touched on um, how to live across some ninety countries. Next slide. further and again this yeah and again this forum was um in in response to what was presented on the uh 19th of april next slide and the people of african descent and indigenous people are collaboratively, we're creating an organization as part of the model that is vital to the global movement that addresses the past of African Americans and e in each Native and each Native American tribal nation as global priority. And again, we're also including in that our island brothers and sisters, our um, Hawaiian Natives, um, Australia, et cetera. So when we're saying indigenous, we're speaking of all of that. And of course, Africa, which is already stated. And original dialogue, the regional um, dialogue on the 14th and 15th of April 21, which is where it started. And you've seen this slide before. So next one. <laughs> I'm trying to keep in mind time of where we're getting. So the indigenous peoples. Oh, I'm sorry. Alliance, that's all right. I'll wait. wait this, so oh, the, no. the I alliance. Want you know, well, I just want to let you know, John, we started a fresh clock. So don't worry about the time. Just make your presentation as clearly as possible. Well, I mean, everybody on this. Well, they, they, can, yeah. they can drop off. But I need to, to we have an audience that knows right. nothing about the time we've already spent. So Got we it. need to spend the time on what we're what we're trying to get done. Understood. Uh, all right, just a moment. Got to go. I got to got to got to find it again now. Just a second. Uh, so what okay. it's going to state is from memory is co-hosted by Cash Community Development, Friends of the African Union is Alliance, and in, in helping to bring um, all parties to the table so that we each can present similar if you you've heard. Herschel mentioned before, um, kind of like the spaceship, we each attach our module. Can you back up just a spec? Sure. I just want everyone to understand, CATO asks, so CASH stands for CATO Asset Services Help Community Development. That's where we get the acronym CASH Community Development because it, as you all know, that build out government forms that won't all fit on there. Next. Okay. <clears throat> so this is background information on again cash community development. It's a little small, Hirsch. I mean, um, Andrew, but I appreciate your help. And um, with that, we were the U.S. Department of Commerce gave us a DBA name because of our big projects in the billions. So um, with that, um, that is um, Native American Trade Information Office, which comes from the World Development Bank's multilateral banks, IMF funds, 
where um, there's set aside dollars for third world nations to develop their communities, which ties in with NCRC, which we're a member of with FAU, et cetera, um, and opportunity zones, hubs, et cetera, that we're working to develop all of that information on um, the two structures of cash community and Native American Trade Information Office, uh, Office. And then with that is the creation of my Brothers Keeper Alliance, Native Americans and Africans American, African Americans July. And then we did that based on, if you can move it to the left a little bit. The left? The other left. side, there you go, yeah, there you go. Wait, this one or here? Correct, that one. So we did this work and joint work at the United Nations on May 20th, 2016, and, and next slide. And that was at the People's Forum. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure of the slide because I don't remember it by heart, but we also presented with Jay Winter Night with a live radio show for the first time in the history of uh, United Nations, Native American gave a, a radio presentation of the challenges for our indigenous people, Native American people. And um, Jay Winter Night Whoop heads up the um, Black Native American Indian Congress. And if, there's a slide in here, but if I said the name wrong, that's the acronym. And then this is just a picture showing the alliances that we have. Next one. This is a picture of the actual event. And you can see it's small, but you can see Herschel Daniels there. You can see Queen Mother Blakely. You can see Jay Winter Nightwoof, who's in the center just above my my tag for the business uh, uh, for us to enter into the actual official meeting. And you may recognize some other people there as well that I know Herschel would know right off the bat, but I can't. Yeah, well, Herschel's back here. He's not going to be a picture. You all don't want to see me eating food. Okay. Uh, but uh, this, the, the key point on this is on this meeting in 2016 and the meeting that we held this year is that they are called what's called official side events. So we are actually part of the indigenous people's forum. Okay, uh, back there in 2016, and as you can see on the tag in terms of uh, our sponsorship, and to get into the, this was held in conference room number eight in the United Nations. This year, we held it virtually, but we'll be back next year. And next year, it's our opportunity to bring over a billion people uh, to the permanent forum on indigenous people, people from Africa, Asia, the Americas, Oceania. It's our opportunity to bring them to this forum. Next Go slide. Ahead. Yep. So this is the structure and uh, as you see at the uh, uh, Congress of uh, Black Native Americans, okay, American Indian Movement in 2016, they were all part of our coalition uh, between uh, New Future Foundation, Cash Community Development and Friends of the African Union. So this is what, what we had planned then. Remember I was recovering uh, from the heart attacks, okay? Uh, but we went, we got it done. But now, okay, uh, uh, when I said recovering, I had already had my five heart attacks. We went and got this done and it was, it was just crazy. Okay, but we got it done. Go to the next page. Uh, before I do, I want to mention to you, it's very small, but this reads by the Kwanzaa Accord Review of 2017, we will offer to the Native American and African indigenous people 
membership in the FAU Congress of Indigenous People based on work at the UN. At a later point, we'll discuss the Kwanzaa Accord, but now I'll go on to the next slide. No, no, leave it there. Go ahead, Andrew. I'd like for you to tell people about the Kwanzaa Accord now. Well, I'll do better than that. I'll actually stop this moment and I'll share the page with you because I had brought it up. Let me un, un video myself. <clears throat> so the Kwanzaa Accord, <clears throat> I'm the co-author of the Kwanzaa Accord along with Corin Smith in Bermuda. This was devised during my trip to Bermuda in 2012. We were at that time strategizing on ways to adapt a national, it actually is called a strategic operational, strategic operational understanding for a national development system for the country of, of Bermuda of sanctuary, sounds of sanctuary. Uh, that was that was actually funded anonymously through Atlantic uh, Atlantic philanthropies by rootcause.org. It was devised to address the rampant killings in Bermuda by the young people. And the idea was to have strategic usage of social media, hip hop music, et cetera, to engage the young people and direct them in a more constructive path. That was in 2010. So in 2012, when I visited Bermuda, unfortunately, we were addressing the same things here in Los Angeles. That was actually just after the 10th anniversary of the Rodney King riots. And so we devised what we hoped would be a plan or extend the plan that had been developed for Bermuda to apply here in the United States, beginning with the Lamert Park area which is the largest African-American hub west of the Mississippi. Also, the Lamert Park happened to be the founding place in 1965 by Moringa Karanga and the members of the US organization. And I have to stress, it was devised by Moringa Karanga and the members of US. One of those members, his name is Wesley Kabaila. He was the very first person to endorse the Kwanzaa Accord. In its simplest form, the idea is to take all of the seven universal principles that are celebrated during the last seven days of the year, seven days a week, for seven cycles of seven days. That would in fact align us with the African Union's Agenda 2063. So in 2012, <clears throat> that was when Madam Zuma first introduced, introduced this concept of the African Union's Agenda 2063, looking backwards from 2063 to now. So the idea was that we would take seven cycles of seven years. The first cycle was from, and as you know, Kwanzaa actually bridges two years. It bridges not, so it starts in one year and ends in the next. So the idea was that in 2012, our first cycle of seven years would deal with the Kwanzaa instance in 2013, 2014. So essentially the idea was that we would have seven years of the first Kwanzaa principle, which is unity. I'll share my screen with you so you can actually see it. I believe I can share my screen. Yes, just a moment. This, will, this won't take very long. Uh, Herschel, I'll get back to what you're doing here right now. No, this is a primary fundamental thing for us because we always we were the second organization to support it. Wesley Kabila on the Congress of African People, and then Friends of the African Union through your brokerage, uh, we combined in a joint operations. So this is key importance. Very well. So the Kwanzaa Accord 2020 and Sankofa Renaissance 2063 was intended to reconnect the African Union's sixth region diasporan worldwide with native Africans. So as Kwanzaa bridges the end of one year with unity and the beginning of the next with faith, reflecting universal principles in a never ending cycle 
and 2013, we had adapted the Kwanzaa Accord 2020 and Sankofa Renaissance 2063 includes a, um, oops, to reflect seven cycles of seven years, <clears throat> beginning with the theme of unity, Umoja, from 2013 to 2019, inclusive of the International Decade of, for People of African Descent, 2015 through 2024, and the August 25th, 2019, 400th anniversary of the first arrivals of indentured um, Africans from the Kwanzaa River area of Angola, as documented by Project 1619.org, of which I am a National Advisory Board member. On Sunday, January 5th of 2020, we advocated year-round weekly celebrations of those principles as a demonstration of building worldwide self-determination, Kuji Chagulia, between and among all members of the sixth region of the African Union as we jointly build the Africa we want, pursuant to Agenda 2063 with African natives and with diasporans from each country. So we fashioned this as a quantum leap with the first theme being Emoja or unity. And so the idea was that every Sunday we focus on Emoja, unity. Every Monday, self-determination, Kuji Kagulia. Tuesday, collective work and responsibility, Ujima. Wednesday, cooperative economics, Ujama. Thursday, purpose, Nia. Friday, creativity, Kumba. And Saturday, faith, Imam. So, Imani. So, what we are actually in now, Herschel, is the second phase of that, because the first phase was unity. So now we're in Kujikagulia. So I find this is very relevant to what we're doing. And so I'll yield back the floor to you. Thank you. And I'll go and back I, to John's page. Yes, thank you. The whole idea of the global reach out, because remember, underneath it all, all humanity comes from Africa. And within that context that we have now, whether it's 1452 or 1493, uh, the modern world is in a basis of racism divided up by those actions of the Europeans who became predominant in the late 1800s as world power. And now we're in another change, we're in another period of change. We have in China, the Chinese Communist Party that made it clear to the capitalists of their country recently that capitalism is not the only way that they see the future of the world. They have wiped out $1.2 trillion worth of asset value this year to make that point and have created worldwide an infrastructure that we as people of African descent now have a organizational infrastructure in which to talk on a peer level about solutions. And the basis of that discussion started, as Andrew mentioned, in 2012, in the discussion in Lamont Park. And in 2015, when we actually uh, sat down and put together during a memorial for Jim Newsom that work. And now in this year, in the memorial for Lee Cherry, who gave us in 2013, a level of access that we would not have had without his opening those doors. And with his passing, he didn't get to live to see five days ago, the creation of a permanent form on people of African descent 
but believe me that we've had extensive talks since 2013 till now. And so that legacy will live on in the coming weeks. And so here we are creating an indigenous people's forum based off of work that John has created in cash community development. And I'll let you tell more about uh, John, talk about John, but uh, his great, great grandfather, Chief O, uh, has given to his great, great grandsons the ability to talk at a level that Native Americans in his day could not because the Supreme Court is finally living to saying these are lawful treaties of the United States. And let's talk about what that does in terms of funding in Oklahoma is a, a prime case of it. And John is in Oklahoma for that reason. He left California to go to Oklahoma uh, because it the Supreme Court ruling, we anticipate it. And it's, it ruled the way that half of Oklahoma is now in the hands of Native Americans as a Native American reservation based on treaties. And it may be that all of Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas and other states fall under that rule also. But John's going to talk about that. And I'll let you do so, John. These are your pages. Instructions, John? If you're still with us, you need to unmute. I, I am. I just need to. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here. Thank you. So, um, let me just try and make it where it's easier for me to see. Okay. So yes, this is the page where again, the logo is my, my grandfather, Chief Martin, um, um, Chief Silverman, Michael Martin, his uh, white given name. And um, so with that, that picture is when he posed for Chief Tablets back in the 1957 he's also the first native american actor in the film industry and silent films for native americans and has been sharing legacies and so forth so i'm really trying to carry on the family tradition of helping to keep our culture infrastructure and um, beliefs alive um, through networking and so with that our nonprofit, these are some of the original board members. It's too hard for you to see there, I understand. But, and then we have some of our sponsors. We're always looking for more sponsorship of what we do. And as um, Elder Cox mentioned, when you're talking about what you do and how you do it, the question sadly is how do we make money at it? And when you're trying to help with uh, some of the areas that we all reach into, education, financial literacy, some of those things don't always happen. But Bank 2 is now um, Chickasha Bank, which it, it is owned by the Chickasha Nation. And it's the number one lender in um, the HUD 184 Native American Indian Program uh, of financing. And that program is very similar to a VA loan. It's just on a VD, VA loan, you use a DD-214 to help with your qualifications. On a HUD-184 loan, you use your federally recognized tribal card. Now, again, we're the only race in the US that has to register our race, but without that, we don't get some of the dollars that are due in small portions of broken treaties, et cetera. So, and then the global PDI process is again, the world development banking process that I'd mentioned. And next slide, please. And then this is an example of, um, and I know it's gonna be too small for you to read, but ideally you can see with our collaborative and our works, 
what we do with um, financial literacy, education, and if you can enlarge that picture at the bottom of this. Um, and a part of my background, of course, is call centers, data centers, so forth. And uh, yeah, there you go. The picture of the room. There you go. So that is a room in Irvine, California, right across from John Wayne Airport near Disneyland of over 75, 750 families for financial literacy that I provided and bringing in experts. And that's the kind of ongoing support and goals that we work to do to bring to our communities because a lot of the challenges for all of our races that take place is because we don't understand the basics of modern financing and how do you grow and develop that so you now have self-sustainable generational income, not just like you hear about people winning the lotto or you know becoming record singers and then a year, two years later they're broke because they don't understand all the nuances. So our our goal is to help that anybody, including youth from the way up, and I did put in the link in the chat, a walkthrough of our website that'll help everyone with all of that later at your leisure, please. Next slide. So I'm the chairman founder and how that came about was I was already working with um, Fortune 100, 500 banks and institutions all over the US in doing community awareness events, including with the military. And during the mortgage debacle, which really the main hit of it was 2008, I had to make a decision. Do I keep my promise to creator, my elders, myself to stay on the path to help our people no matter what? And that's the path I chose. So I am not full time in the banking arena because with that, I wouldn't be able with non-disclosures, non-competes to help all communities have races and international um, work. So that's my personal, what we call red road, that's my path. So that's how that started. And we've been approved and are approved with the military collaborative that meets once a month out of USC and collaboratively across the United States, all the way up through the Pentagon is what we've been working with. And I have letters showing that since 1981, when I was only 17, I was already recognized and involved for my work as a youth, which is what I'm trying to pass on to all youth. They need to, we need to help our youth do that just as I did with my boys. And my son, Jason, is on our he's our director of youth on our board of directors and then again that talks a little bit more about my grandfather there's a picture of him in world war one he was in the army my my dad who's not here but is welsh um james edward moss he was in the navy so i come from people that our whole lives and relatives do the picture here on the left, that handsome young man is my son, Jason, and that's he and I at live events um, where I'm sharing my book I wrote, The Millionaire Loan Officer, which is the foreground of uh, um, financial literacy proven over 30 years, and I'm the only mortgage real estate trainer in the entire U United States of any race ever to get a letter of recommendation on ethics and non-predatory lending, housing and so forth, which is why I have had all over Los Angeles, a lot of networks and letters of support. As you can see on the right with my, my friend, Andrew, Prince Andrew. It's a, it's a different hat than he has on tonight, but there's he and I, and I'm holding up the flyers from FAU and this is at um, one of the events where we were working towards opening up the um, trains Chickasha in um, Crenshaw. Park. Yeah, yeah. Lombard Park, yes. Yes, and that below us is who I was able to meet with, Mayor Garcetti, who 
who again, I have letters of recommendation from the mayors prior to him and him in the city council, including the Los Angeles um, Indian commissioners and all that goes back to 1981. And in the picture at the bottom are events we try and attend as an example of um, Native, Native American um, groups, which I wanna see more of African American um, events and activities, just as um, um, Andrew posts on his site and other um, things that he's engaged with, and I'm glad to attend any and all that I can as well, where we're brainstorming and bringing business nationally, international, and, and ideally bring youth to that so that they can see what are the actual mechanics of the working and and language that takes place because there's a, a whole business language that takes place in that as i'm i know mac and others can attack uh, address is an agreement with now this also mentions again when we talk about indigenous people we're talking about alaskans hawaiians indigenous people all branches of the military from ROTC all the way through retirement. Um, and sadly, when all have given their all, we still give our best to help out the families. And again, I've been doing this since 1981 in recognition. And that, that briefly is talking on, um, about the Native American Indian Trade Information Office that we were given in, in that. Due to non-disclosures, I can't tell you exactly, but we have over 11 billion in set-aside projects that are working to come together. And I can show you one of them that the military knows about um, and speaks to is, um, was our work with Haiti to try and create what was called the a Millennium Airship. And in that, um, Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, a few names you guys might have recognized um, are all involved in that tied in with some of the Native American networks I brought to the table <clears throat> and, and other coalitions. And then this is a slide just breaking down um, more details of the coalitions of the indigenous um, who we're reaching out to are targeted, are people of African descent, poor people, women, people with disabilities and caregivers, seniors and their caregivers, children, um, their parents and their caregivers, at risks, um, achievers, first responders, community government, and people who subscribe the teachings of um, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, honorable. And so that's in a nutshell what that slide is about. Herschel, do you want to Take this back over. If not, I'll keep doing my best. And I, again, Herschel helped put all this together. He's, I call the conductor. He's the one making the music sing of putting these components together with his, um, his uh, background in business structures and so forth. Um, and then, of course, we all put our input. And again, we're looking for everybody's input on these things before we submit it. As Andrew mentioned, if you have questions, put them in the chat. And then this relates to, again, the United Nations. President Obama announced in 2011. Um, we'll, uh, we'll lend to the support to the UN Declaration. And the acronyms are there. I don't know them by heart, but in, the, in that support. Next slide. Some of these are just too tiny for everyone to read. I, I understand. And the United States is home to over um, 2 million Native Americans, 565 federally recognized tribes. And I just want to point out that there are many state recognized tribes that are still fighting for their approval, just as with the Freemans and others are fighting for their approval 
of recognition of being part of these tribes. And it's, it's, um, I'm trying to stay clean here. It's just really wrong how that has taken place. So as an example, even our Caddo tribe that um, originally was all through Louisiana, all the way up through Canada and Texas being a Caddoan word, which again, we talked about that treaty, the Oklahoma treaty. But in that there, there's the Caddo parish in Louisiana and our Caddo sister tribe, the Ada, they're only state recognized. Yet when we were through our death march brought up to Oklahoma, our Oklahoma bands are recognized federally, yet the Louisiana band is not. So we have a lot of people, our, our cattle mounds and burial sites, et cetera, that are recognized as ours, yet sadly our people that still live in that region that refuse to go, that hit out, still are fighting for their rights, just as the Freemen and others are sadly so it's it's a fight that our native american believers as well as against the government and what they're they forced upon us as invaders but that's my two cents on that um <clears throat> and then sorry it's <laughs> now it's too big i think so with the Indigenous Peoples Alliance African Union um, Diaspora Directorate, we obviously are all partnered and working on this together. And you've seen this page that Herschel's gone over in detail and Andrew before. So we'll just move to the next slide. And I know others need to hear it, but again, go to our website, pull it up and you can read through all of this 162 pages, if I remember right, of um, information. And sadly, there is a, a murderous chess game that's been going on, as you see, with the KKK and the um, African American playing chess, which is what it's sadly um, has taken place. And we all know that history to a large extent. And of course, there's so much that has never been taught or shared properly. And that's, again, part of why I encourage everybody to come to these calls, because you'll hear bits and pieces of some of that information, which is very informative. And then a lot of good, caring people like Andrew and um, Michael Harris and um, others put links that you can look up the direct facts. So it's nothing that anyone is here saying. You, you've got documented facts, just like the Caddo Treaty of 1835 is our fact. Um, and And then this is, uh, again, stating that in 2012, we, we started the work business at the conference um, by invitation, and Queen Mother helped us get in there with Friends of the African Union. And again, we are working and have been working with um, number four, okay? We met with um, CIDO and the Second uh, General Assembly of AUs, and the I, I don't know how you pronounce it, but ICOSA, which we've had Guy on calls. He's not here tonight, but he's heading that up in our works with a, them and have been and will continue to. Next slide. Andrew, if you want to point out some of these people, if you know or recognize them, feel free to. Like the gentleman in the hat, I know that Herschel met with, I can't think of his name. Oh, Bishop, yes. Bishop yeah, Snipes. Bishop, okay. Yeah, Bishop Snipes. <clears throat> it's Snipes. Yeah, he made the transition last year in 2020. Yeah, sadly. But again, this work has been going on quite some time. Like even our board of directors, I've lost, sadly, um, 
three of our main founding fathers of the not just our board of directors but all through indian country which is partly why um i'm more accepted into the tribes because they know who our board members were and they wouldn't you know if they didn't know who they were they wouldn't and then and you just saw a queen mother similar to her people know her if you know her then you know that it's the right mindset this beautiful lady is um my honored friend um princess um i don't want to mispronounce that andrew Ngozi. can you help me Ngozi. Ngozi. Yes. and she is in nigeria right now but working with all of us and she was here in the u.s for quite some time where i worked more closely with her which i was very honored to do great lady And still am, but not physically. And then this is showing um, the flow chart of some of the relationships that are laid out that we're working on, have been working on and are, and it carries over to the NYS Department of Division of Corporations on the right. Andrew, if there's any groups here you want to emphasize that you know more about on the FAU side, please do. Well, thank you, John. But as you mentioned, there are 164 pages. So I'm doing my best <clears throat> just to kind of scroll through them. But we did. Yeah, that's why I'm going kind of quick because I'm, and again, Herschel's more, he's the conductor. So, but thank no you. Worries. I just wanted, I just wanted to share that. And then this is the, um, Again, just a continuance of the Global Operations Center that is laid out. And again, <clears throat> anybody that has ideas or concepts to bring to this as we're growing it, please know it's a working, living, breathing document, if you will. So Mac is an example. I, um, I know with your expertise, similar to mine in, in banking and finance, there may be some other avenues that you know of related with um with the black books plan that you would be able to tie in and this is an agreement with cash community development partners agree in 2021 and going forward obviously as you know we've been working together in agreement mous etc since 2016 or before when prince andrew introduced us quickly on the phone and then we carried it from there and thank you again for that andrew and then um, this talks about uh, people of, uh, again, as you can read it, people of African heritage who involuntarily migrated to North America, Europe, uh, Europe the Caribbean, Brazil, et cetera. So. And that would be, of course, the transatlantic slave trade. I pick up the way to say that from Queen Mother. Transatlantic slave trade that kidnapped people and took them to, as you know, um, different parts of the world, including um, Egypt, et cetera. So, and again, more flow charts there's a lot of flow charts because there's a lot of collaboration and that's why herschel came up with someone shared with him and he's been using it now we all do is a big spaceship where you can bring your module your components and tie that in there as well as like um um the the Co elder cox and kenya cox you know the 400 um um african-american recognition etc all those components can still be more education and different things just like with Mar mary and carolyn kennedy and etc and then the indigenous people's alliance And again, these are slides that 
Herschel touched on earlier that that are on the recording. <clears throat> so maybe we can go a little quicker, Andrew. Again, this is mentioning some of the numbers of indigenous peoples throughout the world. One commonality is a lot of us all come from or have or know some of the tribes we've all originated from and are still in our spirits. Right, Andrew? Yes, if I mute myself, you can hear me say yes, John. <laughs> yes. And then I'll pause there for a moment, just a reminder, Queen Mother um, Blakely also was with the Hopi and they gave her an honored name of Grease Wood Woman. And with me understanding what that means and knowing the people that participated in that, as well as me contacting some of my networks with the Hopi um, elders. Um, that's why I refer to her as grandmother, as well as many of her other respected titles. Okay. And the Hopi Indian Nation is more in um, New Mexico area, Mexico, by the Navajo or the Diné people. Navajo is a dirty word, if you will, but um, the real name of the nation are Diné. Spelled D-I-N-E with the hyphen above it. And then one sec, oh, you're good. Because again, we are all members of uh, NCRC, the National Coalition of Community Reinvestment Coalition. And the goal there is just in simple terms, um, Banking institutions have put billions of dollars into set-asides and NCRC is one of them that they've allowed access to then through approved parties and monitored parties to distribute those funds to communities in need, which are all of our indigenous peoples. And around that, that also includes all the areas we've touched on, housing, medical, um, prevention of, of policing, you know, proper policing, et cetera. So all those things are set asides. If you think of it like you've heard how there's some people have taxes, they don't even know that they're able to collect. Well, when they do collect it, it doesn't affect the U.S. debt because it's already there. And that's similar to these billions of dollars that banks have put in and are there, but also because of the mortgage debacle, that's where some of those dollars grew as well. And then the IMF funds from around the world. Okay. And then um, the title is FAU right there. One, sorry, one sec above, just a little. Um, it's, it's title read FAU and cash assets. Um, Community Development with the Black Cong the Congress of Black Native Americans Trillion Dollar Solution for Indigenous People. Herschel went ahead and broke out what some of those, um, that budget um, may look like. Again, of course, all these things may have some movement, but as you all know, when you turn in a, a plan, you have to at least have a plan. So the next slide is where it starts to show some of those, those dollars. And I know he touched on it earlier as an example, the um, 30 billion for My Brother's Keeper and Native American Alliance can be utilized um, worldwide, not just here in the US, okay? So again, there's set asides, but the primary focus of this section 
is Native American dollars, which obviously agricultural farming and ranch is what a lot of our Native people, similar to Black folks, originally came from, right? And in taking care of the lands and not taking more than is needed and always replenishing in gratitude something. So traditional Native American way is you never take something from the land without giving back at least one to twofold so that there's never a shortage and doing it respectfully. Some of these slides now you might want to go through quicker because he's touched on much of this. Now, the section earlier that I was speaking to and Herschel was covering was the ones I wasn't seeing. That's why I brought it up. But all this, again, is what was presented at the United Nations. And this is the document that on my website, anybody can go to from Facebook, anywhere in the world, any official government person and and uh see what well, what did we say what are we saying as a working document it's not set in stone so to speak is that is that a way you would word it in a way andrew yes uh not set in stone it is it it's a living document that's i think an accurate description of it And that's why, again, you've heard Herschel, Andrew, I, and others on the call, we welcome your input because we're all in this together, you know, and we have to find solutions <clears throat> and act upon them, positive actions. So what this represents just for our audience is the work to date and the equity investment that John, as well as Herschel and others have put into what it is that we're working with, but it is also an invitation for you to contribute what you can to improve it and to customize it for what your particular organization or interests are. And you can see in the bottom, just one sec up a little bit. And see one of my dear friends I was blessed to meet at Black Wall Street is a uh, warrior Benice Atchison. She's an amazing lady, and you would not guess her age, but she is um, just amazing. So when you get a chance to hear or listen to her or speak with her, I recommend it. And she's a farming expert. And she keeps promising me she'll send me some pie. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're on the downstroke here. Herschel covered much of this. So I'm just gonna breeze through it. But again, the link is available on the cash community development.org website. It's the second orange button in the middle of the page. So it's this is available for the entire world to see. And it's there also for contributions by anyone that has an interest in aligning their efforts with ours. <clears throat> I just want to add to this so everyone knows the number one suicide rate in the US is Native Americans and military. And sadly, my eldest boy, Jonathan, who was um, physically handicapped but high functioning um after the courts of the mortgage debacle didn't allow me after funds changed to have full custody of my boys he was being neglected and emotionally abused by my ex-wife which courts wouldn't believe and he just couldn't take any more and he committed suicide in 2016 so one of the donation tabs is in his honor 
because since then we've been able to raise over $2.5 million helping uh, Native American people that have addiction or abuse problems to get support and help. We fly them out to a center, give them 90 days of education and help. And my son didn't have any of those challenges, but through insurance companies is the only way I could get those kind of dollars. And I was about finding action, not excuses. So that's one of the other donation tabs that's there as well. But that's why I'm so passionate about helping people with disabilities and job support and everything else because I've lived through it and I know what those pains are when you lose someone or when you can't give to your children what you'd like to give them to help them grow and develop. Well, you certainly have all our condolences, John, and I'm coming to the wrap up of this. And when I get through, I'll shift back over to your donation page and we can investigate some of the causes that you care about and that anyone can contribute to. That'd be great. And I did put in the chat a link that walks through. I just kept seeing a lot of people that didn't understand some of the different resources and why we have certain things up there. So that, that gives you a basic walkthrough, including the financial analysis page that I always encourage everybody to do. If nothing else, you know, especially like now you've got holidays that are going to be coming up or you got the mortgage moratorium, renters moratorium and so forth. That's only going to be through October 3rd. Well, what's going to happen? You now are headed into, you know, the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, right? And then January. And who knows what laws are going to change come January as well. So, um, Having a plan of action and planning and understanding of what are FICO scores, or if you lose your job, how do you roll over a 401k? What's the difference of a CD and a Roth account, et cetera? And that's where you have to have trustworthy professionals. Just because they have a license doesn't mean you can or should trust them. Always do your homework. <clears throat> us are i'll say jokingly or not but our, us native americans learn that with the writing of treaties that never were kept <laughs> <laughs> well john we've come to the end of the road this is the last few pages of this I well think- if you want to back up one second sorry i just think i agree that herschel always shares this that right here If you guys ever question when the dates were and what happened, here's documentation of the first Africans in Virginia. Also in the chat, as I mentioned to you, I'm a member of the advisory board for project 1619.org. And they will tell you that they do not agree with and were not consulted about the 1619 project that was launched in the uh, New York Times. So I'd urge you to actually go to this page to actually find out the true facts. And uh, Calvin Pearson spent 25 years proving that it was not Jamestown, but it was in fact Hampton, Virginia, where the first arrivals of those Africans were. And it took President Obama during his presidency to actually confirm that and designate it as the official landing place. We had the honor of meeting him in Virginia uh, a couple of times. Excellent. Did you uh, put that uh, in the chat? I just did. Andrew's a great multitasker. And I do want to end with the fact that everything we're doing, I think, overlaps the work of the of the project here in the United States focusing on the 400 years with the International Decade for People of African Descent from 2015 to 2024. And to the extent that that is true, 
now with the with this uh, resolution endorsing the permanent form for people of African descent is the perfect time for the 400th commission to actually get its due on the international stage. But I'll follow up with a thought about that later. Now I'm gonna stop sharing this page and I'm gonna go back to cash community development. If there, now's the time for any questions. Before I go back to that page, I'm gonna walk through the donate page and then we're gonna end this session. So now's the time for questions. I have a thousand questions. I'm just uh, kind of depleted for tonight, so I can't ask them now. I have questions about my own lineage as well as about the banking system and even about some of the suicides, some things I've heard. So as a conversation maybe over tea or just another meeting a little earlier and in the evening. Yes, and please, you're always welcome to reach out to me privately as well. Just as you know, this is my life. And any of the networks are... Um, assets that I can help bring information, I will. And I try and put as many up here on the website that allow me to. And just so you know, I know you're looking for the site, Andrew. All of the people, all of our sponsors, all of our networks, everything we vet before we ever put anybody up there. We've talked to or been involved with actual um you know, clients or people that have worked with or have gone through these processes. So <clears throat> this first one is that we have a, and again, it's on the actual sponsorship page, but we have a free reading program. And as I mentioned, my son, Jonathan, um, had auditory vision while well, he was handicapped. And one of those was he was out of visually um, challenged in there's a good reading program called Linda Mood Bell, but, and I worked and helped get them out of their bankruptcy and move into um, a bigger solution was Hooked on Phonics. Well, this, this group here is native owned and they have a, a software program for youth all the way through um, adults <clears throat> that for one, for uh, $99, you get enrolled for a whole year, but you can try it out for free. And there's some free downloadable books as well, including books that touch briefly and on um, uh, black, black history, native history, Asian history, et cetera. So that's the first one. Sorry, I'm sitting here trying to scroll. <laughs> and then Hey, John. Yes. Um, where would you recommend? I just, um, after we had our time in, in Tulsa, I've been pick, getting all of my documentation together so that I can go back and um, submit my application to be placed on the um, Muscogee Creek Nation role, DAS role. Um, which office do you think I should go to? The one in Jinx or the one in Muskogee? Muskogee, and it's their enrollment department. And I can follow up offline with that. And I also okay. have a, a brochure, the PDF that I can email you. So email is okay. best. That helps anybody. If you want to check your lineage, that's one way. But again, it's not by a DNA test that is not accepted by tribes, period. Just so everyone knows. Okay. Okay, so this is the um, life enhancement programs in conjunction with our approved supporters networks um, for Native Americans, past, present, and all American citizens. And uh, as you go down, this rehabilitation is what we were doing and I talked about the 2.5 um, million that we did get towards donations in working towards recovery. And again, these are some factual rates that sadly Native American people have. We have the, there, if any health issues in, in the U.S., Native Americans have the worst, period. So this is um, including, except the one that I'm recently learning has changed a little bit is maybe 
some of the um, Black African American births that right now are taking place where the mother or the baby is having challenges. So, but the, as far as a lot of these other issues, it just touches on that and you can look at those. And then my passion of course is housing financial literacy. And we also have a Toys for Tribes program where you can see on my Facebook page, every year we give away um, toys to native tribes that otherwise wouldn't be able to give kids a, a toy and all of us can relate to whether it's whatever Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever it is you celebrate, uh, a toy or a present or a gift makes it a little more exciting as a child. Then we have one of the tools we use is our support sponsor wise debt relief which i recommend everybody look at this is what really helped us get approval with the military collaborative because it's in a lot of the banks and insurance companies and so forth use a lot of this similar concept but the difference is with ours there's uh, much more support of that and it's been around for about 15 20 years um and we just have the, I have the rights because I'm their spokesperson that we gave it our own look. So we call it wise debt relief where Mac as an example might want to use that and give it a different name. That's okay. And now he can have proper membership for that and control it. <clears throat> and this just talks about some of the poverty rates for Native American one in five homes on the reservations lack complete plumbing. I know many Diné nations, Hopi people, so forth that have never, they're 80 and they've never been able to wake up in the morning, make a fresh pot of coffee, do their dishes in the sink, much less take a shower. There's not enough water. So they have to go out and manually collect water or have it brought to them on the reservations. And people used to say to me or say to me still, why don't they just move? Well, if you look at Detroit, a lot of the black folks went through the same thing, but they own the property, they own the land. Where, where else are they going to go and be able to at least own something, have it, and have a roof and shelter over their head? So what do they do? They stay. And now trucks even bring in food and books and so forth to them. And that's all documented and I'm sure you guys all know. So those are just some of the challenges there. We do work partnership with um, Signature to Community Action Plan between NCRC, the Fifth Third Bank, um, and obviously all the coalitions that Herschel and I are working and others to bring together since 2016 and shaping these products. So on all of these, when you click, click donate, it has a blank page and you can type a comment section, I should say, and you can put in there exactly what program you'd like to go to or multiple, you know, 10% here, 25% here, whatever it might be. And then United Nations, um, forum again civil societies program how do we do all this we've all talked about i mean think about um, i'll just say it herschel we need more financial support to go to meetings and activities and sit down and especially with native american people i'll just say and i'm sure it's similar in the black folks community people want to see you belly to belly eyeball to eyeball and be able to see and read your actual physical body language and get um, a feel for your spirit. That's why I always prefer phone and face-to-face -face, because I can do that just as I'm sure elder can. It's part of what is in our blood. Right, elder? <laughs> so- Well, well I'll, 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 I'll set up that motion. <laughs> yes, thank you, there you go. And then um, this is where 
my board approved putting it in my son Jonathan's name, suicide abuse prevention and health solutions. Um, concern is over 40,000 people die by suicide each year in the United States. It's the 10th leading cause. Um, I will share with you that the um, Sioux Rosebud tribe, um, one year, the suicide rate of children was so high, they declared a national emergency. And yes, there were a lot of death suicides, um, something like 12 or 15 under the age of 12. But when you look at that and you look at the, in that particular reservation area, and I may be off on the exact numbers here, but as an example, let's say there were 2,000 kids in that range. There were something like over 242 attempts. 242 attempts. That is... Awful. Yeah. Sorry, I get choked up. And then um, Native American Veterans Program, and as you know, Herschel Daniels is also an honored chairperson of um, the National Native American Veteran Support Groups. And he's a member of this acronym, which I can't remember exactly what it stands for. Do you, do you remember, Andrew? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, Native, I, Native Black Veterans Association, I believe it is. But, okay. Yeah, I'll defer so, to your, yes. Maybe scroll down a little bit more, it might say. But in either case, we're, we're also um, members of that honorably, but Herschel, of course, heads that up. And we are working as part of our Lawton work. We are working in Lawton, Oklahoma with the Comanche Kiowa and all the, every tribe has veteran recognition remember just if you don't know this i'll say it is that um, native american people since the 1800s have almost a 10 to 12 percent higher enlistment into the military over any other race and part of that my own personal belief is because as a sovereign nation we are not allowed to have our own police and i mean our own military yet the warrior spirit and mindset is part of our culture so part of that is why um, you'll see so many of our honored people male and female and families support our vets and i will say that before any event starts it opens with prayer then the placing of the color guard and it ends the same way. Every single meeting, every powwow, every, everything is in recognition and respect. So I just wanted to add that. And then this is my dear friend. Um, my mom and dad were divorced when I was six years old. My dad was a multi, multi-millionaire. And um, yet, as far as my, my mom pretty much raised us three boys. I'm in the middle of three boys. But Michael Sharman was uh, my high, dear high school teacher who I still keep in touch with that took time out to help me think outside of the box, which is really what helped me develop later my sales training program, my book, Millionaire Loan Officer. We're now all over the world. I've helped over 100,000 people including, as you've seen in prior posts of mine, the Caribbean and a beautiful island of St. Lucia setting up the largest call center in that region, putting people to work. So Michael Sharman at my Upland High School, I started a um, grant where we're trying to give scholarships to Native American preference, but that's not the only. So all all races are, are welcome to submit. And then we try and have donation to be able to help them, even if it's a little bit towards their books or whatever. And unfortunately, it only goes as good as sponsorship, donations, or grants. 
And maybe Elder, you can help me with some of those grants later. That's not my expertise. <clears throat> and then under the community action plan is where we're looking to grow a lot of these opportunities. And that's where we have that donation. And then you can Up, you can quickly go to our first page this, and scroll down to the sponsors at the bottom of the page. Yeah, there you go. Oops. Since we're doing this, it'd just be nice. And thank you for allowing me this extra time. Everybody and Andrew, I really appreciate it. My board will appreciate it. My ancestors appreciate it. No, the first page of our actual website. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Uh, let's see here if I can find it. Probably just hit the it. back page. It might work. Yes. Okay. Let me try the back page. That might work, John. It is working, so just give the internet time, but I do sure. see scrolling. And just so you, everyone knows, when you come to this first page, the donate button, <laughs> which Andrew was mentioning on the right is the orange donate. So that's not what I meant at first, but please, when you look, you can see a video page of some videos. We have our reading solutions and then up towards the top again, Andrew, real quick, sorry back up right there are these little tab those are the tabs and um so you please encourage you later click on those including some of the letters of recommendation because again i'm big about showing what i'm legally allowed to show um in that and then the download in the brown tab here to download our financial survey that's the one where i would recommend everyone does with their family, whoever, husband, wife, whomever, you put that down and it's all private information that normally, ideally we want you to submit and then we'll do our best to look through it. And then we look at our areas of rescue, restore, right? Or rebuild. I mean, if you're in the mode of rescue and you need to save your home from foreclosure or you have tax liens and levies against you, it's pretty hard to start building your banking account and savings account if every time you try and start, they take your money, right? So a lot of people don't even have banking accounts or savings accounts for those reasons. They use mattress stuffing, so to speak. So that's a good starting conversation for all people, kids, family, all of it to go through. So that's that part. And then... When you scroll down to the very bottom, well, I'll just that orange tab is where you get the actual presentation that we went over tonight. Okay. That orange tab is where we see what we spoke about at the United Nations. That's the download. And then go up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and here you can see some of our sponsors that have put dollars in so as an example the native veterans foundation third button on the right that's the only 24-hour hotline for native american vets if you have any reason suicide you don't have food you need a place to stay whatever that's what you would click on and then the chickasha bank is what i mentioned earlier bank two and whenever you click on these, it takes you directly to their websites because we're partners. The Reading Solution Program below the vets, that is what, again, uh, I was mentioning there's some free materials, trial information, and R&T, cybersecurity. Everybody's been needing that. That's what I keep emphasizing the tribes need to do and vets are your organizations i mean a good example elder think about your database 
Is it cybersecurity protected? Are your people using the proper protocols? Can someone walk in and have a reader that now they capture all your database and start doing whatever they're gonna do? So that's one of the organizations. And she actually, Teresa Rule and Randy Rule, that's where R&T comes from. She puts on seminars all over and trains through workforce and other projects where now, as an example, um, Elder, you could have someone on your team that's certified at the highest level or certain levels of being able to win grants and funds. And right now, so many of the tribes do not have their own certified people. They farm it out and then they wonder why they're sometimes compromised because no one cares as much as your own family, put it that way, in my opinion. Then one of our sponsors as well as the Major League Baseball Alumni Association and Jack Lazarko, who pitched for the Angels for 15 years, even though I'm a Dodgers guy, he, we welcome them all as a sponsor and they help us. This other one, um, the Wise Debt Relief is my own base program I mentioned about financing e credible everybody everybody needs to be involved with e credible this starts with the underbanked people and now with all of what's happened in the world over the last 5 years we'll say or a little further back a lot of banks are coming out with tools that are similar mint.com um, other things where it helps keep track of your bills or even your own bank, but they don't take it to the level that eCredible does. And eCredible has a lot of free educational information you can download. But the beautiful thing about eCredible is, as an example, if you have a veteran that a lot of the vets don't have money to have their own space. So they rent a room or rent a couch, literally, to live. But that is not a traditional banking accepted credit approval, just as some things like cell phone and so forth don't show up when you're trying to prove or improve your FICO score, your ability to buy a home or a car or those things. That is not an acceptable trade line. So what eCredible does is they keep track of all your bills. And then when you're ready to buy a car or a home or whatever it might be, insurance, then they do a third party evaluation and they show that you have been maintaining your payments for at least a year. And in all banking, that's normally what we would do is, is look at what is your um, ver verification of income, verification of employment, verification of um, your bills, right? All that, have you been paying? You can't be behind as an example on most mortgage loans um, to get the higher benefits of um, not getting a higher rate. And if you are, then you're dinged or take penalties for each of those. So what eCredible does is they have their own credit scoring system similar to FICO and they create an ABCD grade and then they have business partners, which you're all welcome to try and become a business partner of theirs. And then they would say, I have a car you can get into. And yes, you're going to pay a little higher rate, but the cause and effect is you have a car, you're making your payments, you're getting to work on time, and now you stair step into refinancing that vehicle because now you're at a higher credit rating and now you get a better loan or you trade that car in and get a better car under proper financing, if you will. But that's what is incredible about eCredible. I love them. So- Excellent. You got about uh, three more minutes to wrap this up. So go right ahead. No problem. Then the PDI process is uh, again, the world development banks, 
The wine company is pretty self-explanatory, but the one to the left, the Native American, is who I was mentioning is our state-recognized ADA. Um, I mean, out of Louisiana, they're Caddo Nation, but um, so they've been very helpful, but they're going through some technology things. So I don't know if that hot link is working properly or not. That's those were the main sponsors I wanted to talk about, but there's others. But and again, we're always looking for proper sponsorship or someone that is doing give back that wants to be part of our 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 process. And then again, I recommend our resource tab. There's all kinds of free information. What are what are the three main credit bureaus? How do I improve my taxes? Um, what if I'm a vet? What are the different vet links to help me out? What about if I'm a tribe and I need to find out more? I mean, all these things are on, a lot of them are on our resource tab. And again, they're, they're free, free. And if Excellent. you want more services, yes, then you step up and do that. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, this has been a real marathon. We began at four o'clock, it's 8.30 now. So for those of you who stayed the whole link, thank you so much, particularly you, Elder and Carolyn. But Elder, if you're still with us, of course, I always ask if you would grace us out with your words of reflection. Yes, that's you, Elder Prophet. And again, a reminder, you guys email me any questions or put them in the chat and we'll get back to you. And if she stepped... Oh, there she is. Yes, Elder? I was having my very late dinner, so let's just take a moment. Let's give thanks to Almighty God, the God of our heart, God of our understanding. We just thank you for all the knowledge, and so we know that you created us as one people, and your desire and our vision is for that to be true once again. We thank you for each and every one. We ask you to bless each household. Continue to give us strength and health and the resources to carry forth these visions. We give thanks for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And thank you, everybody, for being so long. I appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Well, good night. I've stopped the recording. So I'm going to end this call. Unless there's anything else, we're out of here. Thanks again for your help, Andrew.